Why, hello everyone. Hello from me. Oh, you are a giraffe. A giraffe. <laughs> I told you I was going to be a giraffe. I know, but I, I forgot in the short amount of time you told me. Gotcha. Gotcha. It's, yeah. It's goddamn adorable. Thanks. Thanks. I love it. Um, right after this, I have my personal stream in which uh, it's my last stream of October. So I wanted to be giraffe. I am giraffe. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I am the giraffe. I feel like that line belongs in like a science fiction movie. Just I am giraffe. <laughs> I am Heather and I am giraffe. Feel my wrath. <laughs> I, I, I like Dune would have been amazing. Was, what was the first line? Dreams giraffe. are from the dream. Yeah. Instead, feel it's just giraffe. like yeah. You hear this voice like this is I am a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> Heather, you gotta do that on your stream. Feel the giraffe. Like oh, yeah. there love you go. That. I actually do love that. You're right. I do love that. Um, all right. Well, anyway, um, let's jump into some of the rules here because holy cow, y'all, we're already in like what level three of this hype train. You're Ooh, insane. Wow. You're you. amazing. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, anyway, uh, first and foremost, we're going to give priority here to the bit messages since that is some real world money spent. Um, we sometimes have time for highlighted messages at the end of stream, but highlighting a message does not guarantee that we are going to see it. Um, please watch the length of your questions. If it's long, I tend to read through it really fast and then we completely lose what the question is. Um, it's going to be better if you just keep it succinct, please. Um, also, please no spoilers. Some people haven't had a chance to see the latest Dune Patrol or whatever, so please no spoilers. Some people haven't even uh, had a chance to see Dune, so just Watch your spoilers um, in or questions. Or Dune Patrol. Ooh. <laughs> um, ooh, what else? Oh, maybe check to make sure before you ask a question that someone else has not already asked it. Um, I'm sure someone has. I didn't really keep track of it yet. But I'm sure someone's going to ask us about that Lightyear trailer. I'm sure someone's going to ask us I think us it was, like, question number two. Was it? Like yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so just double check with that because I always hate, like, if you're the fifth person to ask, ask the question, we're kind of like, eh, we already asked that. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, you know. Um, and please don't repeat yourself over and over again in chat. You could get timed out or possibly banned. Um, that does also include some of the bit questions because... Obviously, we get behind. We're, we haven't even started asking the questions yet, and you already have a whole bunch of questions already asked. So um, just watch out for that and don't get timed out or banned because you're going to be that person. You know what I mean? So I think that's pretty much it, right? That's it. Yeah. And uh, just quick heads up. I just got both my booster shot and my uh, flu shot today. Ooh. And I'm like, are there any side effects? And they're like, oh, it's just the same you got last time you got them. And I am bad side effects so if suddenly like by the end stream i'm just going like this or something like just know that's what that is <laughs> funny because i got i got nothing i got it so bad man so i I'm actually felt better i'm not looking forward to tonight at all so uh yeah but i think it's gonna take a few hours but just give it a heads up just in case <laughs> all right well let's jump into it oh oh sorry just a side note too obviously scare alerts are not on um, because they, we don't want Doug screaming to interrupt our conversation. So I'm really sorry if you gave like yeah, enough of that real a life. certain <laughs> amount of bits expecting the scare alerts. They're not on. They're just not on. Um, anyway, that Disney nerd. Thank you for the hundred bits. Hey guys, how you doing tonight? Question number one. Thoughts on the Lightyear trailer? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I thought it was number two. I was wrong. Uh, what was that? <laughs> just... I'll take good. I'm not the only one. I was just like, um, what the hell was that? What? what? Okay, and I'm I'm a fan of like the TV show that came out. I've only seen a little bit of it, but I really liked it. So I was kind of thought maybe the movie was going to be that, but no, they're trying to make it like First Man or something well, like that, which I'll is say, really I'll bizarre. Say this. I'll say this. Pixar has kind of not a good history with most trailers. Like most times I go into yeah, a Pixar true. movie and I'm like, well, this is way better than the trailer made it look. But <laughs> based well, only on the trailer, time. this looks like the blandest goddamn thing I've ever seen. Yeah, but maybe like, I have no time. interest in seeing it based on the trailer. <laughs> All right. I mean, I think it looks like it could be fun, but like also, like you said, didn't we already have a series? Um, yeah. that did this, so... And I love to you see want those to know characters. what Buzz's origin story is? Andy's mom bought him at a store. <gasps> How dare you? How dare Spoiler. you? Fish, thank you for the 50 bits. Hello, y'all. Happy Halloween. Plan on doing anything spooky this Sunday? This Sunday? Yeah, I'm uh, going to Michigan. It doesn't get any spookier than that, <laughs> particularly if you watched Ash vs. the Evil Dead. Uh, handing out candy, drinking, and handing out drinks. 
Great. Oh, so I'm coming to your house. Good. Good to know. <laughs> I'm knocking on Doug's door for a beer. Uh, Matt, Hannah, thank you for the 50 bits. Who's ready for more hunky looking buzz? <laughs> I mean, is that going to be the new thing? Is that, I mean, of course it is. Of course it is. I still love, I just love He's all the. going to be all over DeviantArt and everything, like him shirtless and stuff. He probably already is. <laughs> probably already is. Um, Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. Now that you've played the Kingdom Hearts games, how would you rank the three games from worst to best in terms of your enjoyment? Enjoyment, sorry. Uh, well, none of them I disliked. Uh, I guess I like the gameplay in three probably the most, but yeah, the cutscenes and stuff taking a while and some of the levels were just okay. So I guess I'll say two, three, one, but I like all of them. I think they're all good. Antari, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, would you please do an NC for Power Rangers 2017? It's a very underrated, in my opinion. It might not be for most of the fans, but it's a good coming-of-age drama that happens to have Power Rangers lore. That's good enough for me. Uh, yeah, I thought it was... Yeah, honestly, I thought I was going to like it more because so many people were saying, like, it, it was a lot slower. So I was like, ooh, but the dialogue's still a little weird and awkward sometimes. So, uh... What, I don't Elizabeth know. I, Banks? I, 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 yeah, weirdly, like, even that wasn't as much fun. Though the Krispy Kreme shit was fucking hilarious. So, I don't know, maybe at one point. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. Which Kingdom Hearts boss was the most annoying? Ansem in Kingdom Hearts 1, Roxas in Kingdom Hearts 2, or the Sludge Monster in Kingdom Hearts 3? Man, that's rough. I guess I'll say the Sludge Monster, because it just wasn't fun. Like... <laughs> Ansem was a pain, but it's like, okay, when you're done, you felt this sense of accomplishment. Say the Roxas was legit fun to fight. I just fucking hated that sludge monster. Everything about that thing and how long it took, I don't know. I just fucking hated it. <laughs> well, and now I'm thinking back to with Kingdom Hearts 1 with Ansem, you may not have been used to the JRPG seven stages of a boss kind of thing, so it just felt yeah, like, like it just kept going. Guy. Yeah, if I died, I'd have to start at, like, stage one. Well, and I kind of did, right? I had to no, fight no. all those little critters uh, a couple sometimes. Of times. The boss. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, that was pretty annoying, too. I don't know. It's a toss-up between those two, the more I think about it. Roxas was fun, though. Still bomb. thank you for the 50 bits. Favorite movie sequel of all time? Uh, I really, really, really like Godfather 2 a lot. But I also really like The Empire Strikes Back. Uh... Maybe Dark Knight. Like, I know it's not the best one, but it's, like, it's probably my personal I'd favorite. say Dark Knight is good, and also uh, Evil Dead 2. I like that better yeah. than Evil Dead 1. Hmm. I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Have you guys seen that Lightyear teaser? Apparently, Chris Evans was Pixar's top choice to play him. He agreed because he loves animated movies. Oh, cool. Well, um, good for him. I hope it's good, but, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look like much, but if anything, that's almost a guarantee it's going to be good. <laughs> Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. I don't know if you've seen the most recent episode of Doom Patrol yet, but all I can say is get ready. It is hands down Brendan Fraser's best performance on the show, if not ever. Okay. Uh, yeah, I caught the episode where we literally just caught up with the one that came yeah, out I'm, last week. So I had to yeah, watch I'm the new one. Ep I haven't seen the new one. I'm one episode behind. I'm probably going to yeah. watch it right after the stream, actually. <laughs> Michael, thank you so much for that 15-month subscription. Welcome thank back. You. Appreciate it. Thank Good you. to see you. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! fan, thank you for the 50 bits. Hi, guys. Have you seen The Inside Job on Netflix? And if so, what are your thoughts? I watched the first season, and it's really funny. That show and Big Mouth are my two favorite Netflix animated series so far. Yeah, I liked it. Uh, I weirdly had a lot of time. I got done early uh, last night. I was like, eh, let me just binge watch this. So I watched the whole thing and uh, I did like it. The only gripe I had, uh, I didn't like when it had a conscience. Uh, <laughs> I liked when it was more like nihilistic and anarchy and stuff like that. When it tried to do that stuff, I thought it, it was a little awkward, but uh, uh, I, I don't know. I, I want to see more of it. I want to see them keep doing the jokes and the conspiracy theories. I, I thought it was a lot of fun. Energy Czar, thank you for the 50 bits. We know Doug's top 20 TV shows, but what are Rob's favorite TV shows of all time? Uh, there's too many. It's probably going to be a lot of anime. Definitely Cowboy Bebop. Um, I really um, Mal Malcolm in the Middle uh, was really good. Frasier, Third Rock from the Sun. Uh, for the first season of Prison Break. 
the first couple seasons of Arrow. Those are all good. Um, that's some. Just I could yeah. make a list of like fifty. So, <laughs> Matt, Hannah, thank you for the fifty bits. I'm really interested in what game Doug will be playing tomorrow. Uh, we're gonna be doing two uh, Disney game, like retro old Disney games. Uh, and then after that, we're gonna decide if we want to do more Disney style games. Uh, you know, like for Disney December, or if we want like a palate cleanser and do something that's like just totally different. Uh, so yeah, we'll just uh, see. Last of Us too. That would pair well after some Disney games. <laughs> exactly. It's just like Kingdom Hearts. I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Who do you think is a better mother? Della Duck from DuckTales or Nicole Watterson from The Amazing World of Gumball? I don't think I've seen enough of Gumball, so I guess I'll say Della. <laughs> Energy Czar, thank you for the 50 bits. Mad Men or The Wire, which do you prefer? I haven't watched either. <laughs> I liked Mad Men. Yeah, I, I haven't seen The Wire. I, I, I'll say Mad Men just because I've seen more of it. Um, I've seen a number of episodes. I haven't watched any of The Wire. Anu, that wonderful nerd, thank you for the 61 bits. Ha, you thought it was Anu, the god of warm hugs, but it's me. Anu, that wonderful nerd all along. Now cry in despair for no more warm hugs. <laughs> I could use it tonight. I'm gonna hurt. <laughs> Antari, thank you for the hundred bits. Doug, as someone who's had autism for most of my life, it warms my heart that you're doing charities for autism. Thank you. I don't care what those mean videos talking about your controversy say. You're a good guy, Doug. Thanks. Um, no, actually, someone on the stream, uh, I think, recommended it. Uh, yeah, and uh, just putting it out there, any, I mean, I go on like Charity Navigator. I try to find ones that have like four stars and stuff like that. But if there's ever a charity of someone's like, hey, can you do a shout out for this? Please just shout it out here in the YouTube comments. Uh, yeah, I'm always looking for them. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. Who did a better job at being creepy in your opinion? Vincent Price or Peter Lore? Peter Lore. Um, That's hmm. my answer too, Peter Lore. I, you know, I hate to say it, but this this just happens. It, it, He's got just a creepier, weird kind of face and the voice. Um, I really just, I always loved it. Like, Vincent Price is definitely very, like, mid-Atlantic accent and rich. And But there was something about Peter Lorre, whenever he popped up, it's like, you can never forget it. Uh, you know, I'll say Price. I think there is a sophistication to him that when he does suddenly go so evil and so mean, it's kind of creepier because you know how smart he is. Not to say that Laurie's characters weren't smart, but there was kind of this bruteness you're expecting where Vincent Price, it's like you're expecting it and you're not at the same time. I love, like, one of my favorite movie trailers ever is House on Haunted Hill, the original one, because, like, it opens and it he doesn't even pretend to be the character. He just says, hello, I'm Vincent Price. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to invite you to a party where there will be drinks, refreshment, and murder. <laughs> like, he just does it so straight-faced. <clears throat> Mark Creation Studios, thank you for the 50 bits. Hey, Doug, what do you plan on playing after tomorrow? You going to do Remind at some point, or are you still pooped out with Kingdom Hearts? I I'm definitely going to take a break from Kingdom Hearts. Uh, I, I was saying I a part of me wouldn't mind checking out the game that came after 3, because I, I don't mind that idea, although it sounds like it's short, so I don't know how long it would go. It would take but, a couple uh, of streams, but yeah. It, yeah, but but we're trying to figure out, again, if we want to do, like, because after I do these two tomorrow, like, that'll be it for the Disney Summer ones I have to review this year, so it's like, I'm digging the idea of, a like I said, a palate cleanser, but uh, I don't quite know yet. Kermit Wazowski, thank you so much for that 24-month subscription. That's two heckin' thank years. You. Welcome back. Thank you. Oh, and they said two heckin' years. Also, Doug, mm -hmm. thank nice. you so much for plugging the Autism Self-Advocacy Network this week. I'm on the spectrum myself, and they do great work that actually includes autistic people in the conversation rather than talking over them. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, while well, I was doing research on, <coughs> excuse me, while well, I was doing research on it, uh, they were saying that, they said that was a big part is uh, really talking to the community about uh, about everything and seeing what's best for them. So uh, yeah, everything I heard was really good. Fish, thank you for the 50 bits. Since Heather is a giraffe, why aren't you a dinosaur, Rob? I wasn't, nobody gave me the memo that we were supposed to dress up tonight. <laughs> I wasn't told. This... There's no time to plan, man. Yeah, and I'm Batman. I, it was a last minute decision by me. I'm sorry to make you all look like bad, bad, but <laughs> energy Zar, Thank you for the 50 bits. What do you think is the funniest anime you've ever seen? Oh, uh, 
uh, Trigun when it wants to be is really very funny. Uh, Azumanga Dayo was really funny. I was going to say Azumanga Dayo. I'm so glad to hear that because I was like, is, was this just me in high school thinking it was the funniest shit ever? Or is it actually funny? <laughs> Uh, Excel Saga was really funny. There, oh, there was one Excel called Saga. I don't, Good choice. The English translation is called Desert Punk. I forget the Japanese original, but that one was funny. And yeah, Chad, you mentioned it. The, the ghost stories dub is amazing. Oh, okay. No, yeah, it's funny because I was thinking like, yeah, I don't really seek out anime comedies. For some reason, I don't get into like that much anime humor. I like it more when it's mixed in with the serious stuff like Cowboy Bebop. But I have seen a lot of that dub and it is really, really funny. <laughs> I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Out of the three show you, shows you've seen for Disney December, which character is your favorite from each one? I think I've watched more than three shows. Uh, now, okay, I mean, I'm on Tangled now. I guess I'll do that. I mean, <laughs> especially if you watch the third season. Cassandra, holy shit. <laughs> That's a great character. Um, oh, and I guess, uh, what, Clone Wars? Uh, oh, God, I had to go back and remember all those characters now. Um... It's Ahsoka. Like, Just embrace it. No, it's Ahsoka. not Ahsoka. It was someone else because everyone always says Ahsoka. Like, I was trying to think of who the other one was. Oh, the, um... Must that be like everyone else. What, what's her name? Ventress? Is that her name? Oh, I love Ventress. Yeah, yeah, Ventress. She was fucking cool. And, and Darth Maul. Anyone from that planet was fucking awesome. Shadow the Hedgehog, thank you for the hundred bits. The best yet horrific bully insult I've heard in a video game, Christopher Walken in The Ripper, 1996. She has to have 20% less IQ points and be fatter for me to be interested in her. Has there been anything worse horrific bully quote than this? Or would you say this is the best one so far? <laughs> it's unfucking believable <laughs> I think he says that in there too. What does it have to have 20% less IQ? I, I, IQ I points and be fatter for me to be interested. Have to have 20% less IQ points and be fatter for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> God, one that's better than that. Uh, I mean, I feel like I would need to know the context. Of that. I do love. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's a bully quote. It's just he was drunk as hell. But I always love that line in a. Uh, Oh, what was it? A League of Their Own, where he kisses their freaking escort or whatever, and he's like, by the way, I loved you in The Wizard of Oz, because <laughs> she looks vaguely like the Wicked Witch. Uh, my favorite's in The Sopranos, when she he's talking to these two people, like this tough guy and his daughter, and the daughter swears something at me and goes, oh, what a mouth. You blow your father with that mouth? I love that. <laughs> so good <laughs> like i was it the ref had the one about like here's three nails and some wood go hang yourself on the cross <laughs> tenko thank you for the 50 bits hey you three hope you all are doing great today love the stephen king ish review yesterday if you've seen the trailer drops these past few days what did you guys think uh Bebop is looking a little more interesting, though. Something Rob was yeah. saying, and I kind of agree. I hope it's not just a shot-for-shot -shot remake of the anime. I don't want that. I want something a little different. I was actually digging the 70s style one where they keep moving the line. And, like, that was really creative. I wouldn't mind more of that because it is different. But, yeah, I don't know. I'm all over the map with it. Be Bebop did two things. Like, it did show it has a budget, which was my biggest worry initially because everything was very claustrophobic in the earlier trailers. The, my only complaint is, yeah, I was just like, every single scene in that trailer, I'm just like, oh, it's Piro LeFou. Oh, those are the eco-terrorists. Oh, it's Ballad of the Fallen Angels. And I'm just like, is this just going to be like just every episode and that's it? Because I'm like, we have the anime then. What's the point? Um, so I'm hoping there's a little more to it than that. But Bebop looks really good. Like, I'm totally sold on the look of the show now. Yeah. Yeah, and I thought, I thought it had at least enough of its own style to be like, okay, they might be bringing something new to it. So I'm excited to see it though. You know, I'm very curious. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, Kelly, thank you for the 200 bits. Wow. Heather, that is awesome. And very cute. Where did you get it? Amazon. I just got it off Amazon. It's, I think I just looked up giraffe onesie and it was like one of the first listings off Amazon. So Brad had one as one of his Christmas onesies. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I know a guys, thank you for the 50 bits. I have an idea for an action film. What if a hitman was under house arrest and has a bounty on his head? Uh, Actually, it's a pretty amusing idea. <laughs> isn't that kind of what cop shop is about? I think, or maybe I'm wrong. I might be getting them mixed up. Uh, but, uh, no, no, you're right. It's something different. That is a good idea. It's kind of like a reverse home alone. I dig it. I dig it. 
M Tapid, thank you for the 100 bits. Are the three of you fans of Mario Party? And if so, are you excited for Mario Party Superstars? Um, as one of the only people who is a fan of Mario Party, yes, Superstars <laughs> looks fun. <laughs> I, I like Mario Party. I fine. <laughs> cannot think of a game Nintendo wise I dislike more. <laughs> it really does. It's so arbitrary. The game, like, really? okay, if you do. I guess a lot of people hate this game. Oh, yeah. If you do the mini games and just the mini games alone, like, ah, we'll just do some mini games. It's fine. That but yeah, board that's game. Oh, the board game. The board game part is shit. That's the word. Sucks. I well, who hate the hell it does that? So Anytime I play with people, it's always the mini games. I never do the board. The game only part. good thing it's for is teaching kids that life is arbitrary, unfair. Because it's like, oh, I got <laughs> stars. No, now, Mario Kart is for that. Is like, who took the most shits during the game? You get an extra star. And it's like, oh my god. Yu-Gi-Oh fan, thank you for the 50 bits. Since it's almost Halloween, what are your guys' favorite Halloween costumes that either you have worn or have seen other people wear? Hmm. Uh... A long time ago, I think it was right after uh, Hunter S. Thompson mm. died. That was I, a good one. I, I went as him, but with this giant <laughs> bullet hole, I call myself Hunter X. Thompson. And the only reason I did that is because I know he would approve. <laughs> Like, that's the kind of guy he was. I'm like, no, he would get a laugh out of this. So I, I, I thought that um, was good. Doug and I one year win as Jay and Silent Bob. I thought that was pretty good. That was pretty fun, yeah. One time Lucas and I did a hipster Beauty and the Beast, and that was pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, yeah, half the Bell memes are her with the glasses anyway. <laughs> right, exactly. That's what inspired it. So I had a yellow dress, and I had, like, a, a vest a denim vest and glasses and books and Lucas had on like a flannel and he had a, a hat. It was fun. We, we had a lot of fun. Oh, I take it back. One. That remind me, there's actually uh, a Beauty and the Beast one that uh, my wife did. Is She won as Belle and I went as Beast from X-Men 3. So I had like <laughs> blue. Oh yeah, that was, like that. That, that was pretty fun. Antari, thank you for the 100 bits, Doug. I know I promised I wouldn't request, request Telltale's The Walking Dead again, but I just hope you haven't forgotten and it's still on your list. I truly believe it's the video game equivalent equivalent of Shawshank. I know you'll agree. Uh, it's on the list. That's not a guarantee we're going to do it, though. Uh, it is one of the ones I'm looking over, though. There's a couple other ones I'm interested in, uh, too, though. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. Who was worse in, this, in the Disney sequel? Olaf in Frozen 2, or Timon and Pumbaa in Lion King 2? Olaf. Yeah, the, Tim Timon and Pumbaa. Olaf, actually. Yeah, Timon and Pumbaa really can get bad. annoying, but it's like, okay, they they disappear, or they help, help out the story in some way. Like, Olaf was so annoying in that second one. I know, guys, thank you for the 50 bits. Which Venom film would you say is better? Venom or Venom Let There Be Carnage? That's from you, Doug. I haven't seen that. I, I, was, I mean, I'm not really a fan of either. I guess Carnage, because Harrelson and... Um, oh, shit, what's her name? Play Shriek. Uh, oh, I don't know. I'm blanking on her name, but um, uh, they were a lot of fun. Was it, was it Harris? Oh, I can't remember her name, but they were a lot of fun. I wanted more of them. I wanted actual fucking Carnage. <laughs> That's funny, because I think I like the first one better, because the second one felt like it was trying to recapture the magic of what happened with the first one and, like, was there trying was no magic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it's Naomi Harris, apparently, is what chat hey, is I, saying. I was right, Harris. Okay, I was you right, were. okay. There you go. Um, Eastern 57, thank you so much for the 500 bits. Evening all, who would play Doug Robin Heather in Channel Awesome, the movie? Well, I mean, Walter White, mm. I think, would have to play. Oh, I'm going for Brian Blessed for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been told that I look like Aya Cash, so maybe Aya Cash. <laughs> uh, talking of Carl, thank you for the 50 bits. Question for all of you. What villain from your childhood is underrated and think is a badass threat? For me, Ivan Ooze from Power Rangers movie and <laughs> David Bowie's character in Labyrinth. I mean, I don't usually hear those, but okay, fair enough. Um... They're saying underrated, so someone you don't always think of. Yeah, um, maybe uh, not because the villain himself is that great, but I really understand the motivation more now. The villain from uh, Secret of Nim, the one who didn't want to move and they wanted to stay in the bush and they kept wanting to steal the power. I, I feel like I've oh, yeah. known people like that now. So mm. <laughs> it's one of those things where I was just like, yeah, okay, this is actually more relatable uh, where this guy is coming from. I, I mean, not in a good way. I'm like, okay, I know people are like, nah, nothing oh. changed. Everything stayed the same, but. I'll take, uh... 
Oh, I. Th- th- I think that vi- I, I know. I think that villain from an American Tale, the one who's posing as the rat. Just mm. the more I thought about it, and the duplicitous like way he was just pretending to be a mouse the whole time, and mm. he's a cat. And I'm just like, yeah, that's pretty fucked up. Now that I think about it. Well, it's good commentary too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sailor Aaron, thank you for the 55 bits. Hello, you beautiful three. Hoping you guys are doing well. So, Rob, how did you like part one of Dune? Also, how is now and then here and there going? And what episode are you on and your thoughts? Okay. So the friends I have over to watch this thing, two weeks in a row canceled. Oh, no. Because uh, one of them got sick, and then the next week someone else in the family got sick. So I will let you know when I continue further with it. Uh, but I've I've got it purchased, so it's definitely going to happen. Uh, Dune 1, I really liked it. Um, I was super surprised. My wife really loved it. She actually watched it on HBO the next day. That's a awesome. Lot, a lot of yeah. people I would not think would get into it who... I, I mean, I say if you know anything about Dune and you like anything about it, I think you'll like the movie. If you know nothing about Dune, that's what surprised me. There's a lot of people that know nothing about it and are legit enjoying it. Like, that really surprised me. I guess so, we'll see with the second week. But, uh, yeah, this, it's already greenlit for a sequel. Yeah, I think the secret is, and this might annoy people who are huge fans of the book, his secret to adapting it was to not. He just was like, take only what you need and, like, just cut out so much stuff. But that may be why people can follow it, because you're mostly going on emotion, and the couple things maybe you don't follow, you're like, well, it's only part one. Maybe it will be explained later. See, that's um, so funny. I thought it was the opposite. I actually thought, like, for a two-and-a-half-hour movie, I'm like, man, they're leaving in a lot of stuff you technically don't need, but it's important in the book. You know, like what Lynch did, you know, but, uh, you know, that's the one where Oh, no, really there's a lot of, I mean... I know there's other stuff. There's a whole there's character whole missing. There's whole characters yeah. missing that were both in the Lynch from the miniseries and the book. And I think yeah. there's one character that's cut out that isn't going to show up at all, which no, amazes I, I, me. So I, I really enjoyed it, though. And I would say if you're interested in seeing it all, see it in IMAX. Yeah, it is. Because uh, yeah. it's, it's right. way different. Watching it on HBO was fine if you got a big screen TV, but the sound and everything on IMAX, like, it was made for that. Mm-hmm. And I really loved it. <laughs> I watched it on HBO on a Tuesday night and dang, I, I need to go to a theater and watch it. That was like my takeaway. Yeah. I really enjoyed it, but I was like, I need to see that again, but in a theater. hundred <laughs> yeah, percent different. It's not just the visual, it's the sound. The sound, sound was yeah. so like, <laughs> Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. Which of the four original Ghostbusters was your favorite? Peter. Uh, it's a toss up between Peter and Egon. I always like the sciencey types. When I was a kid in stories, but I mean, Peter was obviously the funniest. Dillbomb, thank you for the 50 bits. Favorite character in the Toy Story franchise? I mm. love Jesse. Je- Jesse's pretty love good. Jesse. Jesse's fun. I mean, do- <laughs> it's going to sound weird. Does Zerg count? <laughs> sure, <laughs> why not? Like funny. Zerg. <laughs> I uh, am your father. Oh, you're a great dad. <laughs> I liked Mr. Potato Head and uh, the Piggy Bank. Because they, they always pair those two together, and they always have, like, little background lines that are really funny. Oh, you might be right. Yeah, the, the piggy bank's pretty funny. Actually, I think I'll change it to that. The I do piggy like bank's it. name is Ham. Pay Ham him some Ham. respect. Ham. <laughs> okay. Matt Hanna, thank you for the 50 bits. So House of Mouse was made for Walt Disney's 100, 100th birthday. So I'm really curious as to what they're going to do for the 100th anniversary of the Walt Disney Animation Studio. I don't know. <laughs> Take his head out of that freezer and, <laughs> and animate it. Literally it reanimate it. And pirates of the Caribbean. I don't know. And just I mean, usher what, in the apocalypse. <laughs> what better way to celebrate animation than by reanimating the head back to life? It's brilliant. I can just see Mickey now. Life! Give me life! <laughs> Talking of Carl, thank you for the 50 bits. After the new Suicide Squad movie and then game, are you afraid we might get too oversaturated with them? Because we could have had a legit Justice League game. No, not after the box office (laughs) results with Suicide Squad. Sadly, I wish it did really well. Um... No, I, I, I don't know. Not. You never know, though. Like, they're they're reevaluating. Like, Dune, like, I looked at the box office results for Dune, and I'm like, that's it. But the studio apparently is like, oh, my God, this did better than we thought it would. But in the COVID world, everything's different. So Yeah, I especially for watching it at home, too. Yeah. Um, And to be fair, the video game does involve the Justice League, because it is Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. 
Um, so you'll get the Justice League in it. You'll just be killing them. That's all. Yes. <laughs> I don't know, I guess that's more fun than playing the Justice League. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. Which video game movie do you dislike more? The Angry Birds movie or the Sonic movie? Oh, Angry Birds. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah Sonic was Angry just sort Birds. of a, you know, at least they, you know, at least he looked right. There's an occasional laugh. Like the Angry Birds movie, I, I don't know. It just rubbed me the wrong way. I really <laughs> hated it. <laughs> and the second one's I'm, great. I'm with you on that. The Sonic movie's just bland. It's not the yeah, worst thing it's ever really made. Not, not like even awful. close. Yeah, yeah. that's bad. Yeah. I just, just wanted more. I'm like, it's a Sonic the Hedgehog. Like Angry yeah. Birds, I probably would Angry wouldn't Birds had no idea to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Retro Station, thank you for the 200 bits. Loving the giraffe gear. Thank you. Happy Halloween. Just saw a kick awesome, terrible horror movie. The werewolves are coming. The rats are here. <laughs> I haven't heard okay. of that one. You that sounds that fun. <laughs> All right. Well, it's a kick-ass, awesome, terrible movie, apparently. Um, Antari, thank you for the 100 bits. Solid nostalgia-ween. Now I'm excited for Christmas. First, would you do an NC for Polar Express? Second, would you uh, would also love if you checked out Second Star to the left, A Christmas Tale? It's on YouTube. An answer to the first one. Okay. Great. Uh, an answer to the second one. Uh, I might check it out. I doubt I'll do a review of it, though, simply because I don't think anyone would click on it. <laughs> and it's a compromise, especially now we have sponsors in a lot of the videos. So um, probably not, but but I'll try to check it out. Mumrar, thank you for the 50 bits. The new Lightyear movie has a cool premise. Based off a movie within a... Based off a movie within a movie or a real-life character in the Toy Story... Hold on, let me try to read this again. The new Lightyear movie has a cool premise based off a movie within a movie or a real-life character in the Toy Story universe. I wouldn't call this a spin-off, sequel, reboot, or remake. What would you call it? I mean... <laughs> Why wouldn't you call it a spin-off? Yeah, you know what grab? I mean? Cash grab yeah. is what I would call it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter. As long as it makes money, I don't care. I don't think Disney cares what you call it. Um... I did hear something about that. Like, it's supposed to be, like, based on a real person in the Toy Story universe. But I'm like, wait a minute. There's ships that can, like... You know what? William Shatner just went to space. Anything's possible. I'll shut <laughs> up. Sorry, I don't know why that got me, but that got me good. I just wish they would let Toy Story rest in peace. Right. Like, I just... I knew, even after three, I was like, there's no way it's going to stop there. They're going to find a way. Mm -hmm. And even after four, they they still have found a way. Talking of Carl, thank you for the 50 bits. What we really need is a Woody movie voiced by Robert Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> like, like he's actually a cowboy like in the old west. <laughs> I, this makes too much sense. If Honestly, I'm route, probably more for okay. that than what we're going to get out of both. No, 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 but that's for because Chris Evans, like Captain America and stuff. No, I am way too yeah. okay with that. Still bomb, thank you for the 50 bits. Are you... Are you a fan of Paul Thomas Anderson as a filmmaker? And if so, what's your favorite film from him? Mm, oh, I want to make sure we're talking about the right. Magnolia, Punch Drunk Love. Yeah, no, no, no. I because there's always I always think of P. T. Anderson, uh, the guy who did like Mortal Kombat and Event Horizon. I'm always making sure. Okay, yeah, this is the same one. Uh, I really like his stuff a lot. His new one looks. I was gonna say weird, but I guess that's all his movies. Um. Hi, but uh, Nights too. I'm not sure he's done one I didn't like. That's kind of hard to pick a fair. Probably Magnolia. Oh, I like Magnolia. I love Magnolia. Uh, yeah, probably Magnolia is my favorite. Oh, I thought you were saying like one you didn't like. Oh, no, no. Um, I'm trying to think of one I didn't like, but I was trying to think of my favorite one. It's probably Magnolia. But I like Boogie Nights. I like Punch Drunk Love. I like them all. Yeah, it's hard to say what it is. There's something about the atmosphere and how slow it takes it and where it ends. It always ends at a very strange, random point that weirdly makes it more interesting. Uh, so, yeah, I uh, I really enjoy them. There will, like, God, yeah, there will be blood, too. Uh, yeah, hmm. there's a lot of good movies. That's so tough. <laughs> that Disney nerd, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, you breaking character during your sponsor breaks was the best part of your review, especially when you immaturely laughed at a boner joke. <laughs> yeah, it's not until I said it, I'm just like, oh, well, all right. No, that's my favorite good. is when you're just like, this is what they sent me, guys. Now making it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, and I, I kind of do it again in the next one, but uh, not as much as this last one. Anu, thank you for the 50 bits. Got a theory about the lawn man, uh, lawn mower man, and it's what's inspired the Matrix. Uh. 
I mean, Matrix is a lot of different stories and elements uh, kind of thrown into one. Uh, I mean, maybe that's one of them. I don't know. I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Doug, have you figured out which bad Ben Affleck Christmas movie you'll review for this December? <sighs> Not yet. Do I go with Reindeer Games or do I go with Stealing Christmas? I don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> Reindeer Games would maybe make sense like after Christmas, like because there's one review, uh, you know, after the 25th, because it's Reindeer Games is kind of in the title. Like everybody remembers that as a bad movie. Mm -hmm. So yeah, may maybe that one. We'll see. Sailor Aaron, thank you for the hundred bits. Also, Doug, two questions for you. If you could do it for a top for an NC top eleven list, would you do a top eleven Cowboy Bebop episode slash ses sessions in your opinion? I mean, since the Netflix series is coming in a few weeks, that would be totally awesome if you can. Also, have you seen Nocturnal Animals yet? It's still on Netflix. I mean, we know no, number I, one would be Ballad of Fallen Angels. Every list I is always love Ballad it. of Fallen Angels. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe for me, be the Mushroom episode. <laughs> I do really the Mushroom episode. Mushroom sound. Yeah. Episode. Uh, but, uh, I, you know, uh, when you said, uh, could you? That's the key word. Because uh, with uh, Japanese copyright laws, no, I don't think I could. <laughs> I, I think they come right after me. So uh, probably not. But even on top of that, I kind of agree with Rob. Like, everybody's done it. Uh, and my list would probably be very similar to everyone else's. I, I don't think there'd be any big surprises in there. Talking of Carl, thank you for the 50 bits. After the DC fandom, I wish by this point we got confirmation whether or not there's still a shared universe. I know directors and actors have to keep it vague and speak in hyperbole, but DC and Warner Bros. set out for a shared universe. We will love these movies individually, but the masses expect a connection. If WB doesn't want it, then just say that. No, I, I think if it's half and half. Wanted, I like. I would be happy if they said that, and I would be like, "Thank you." I am enjoying the fact that WB is just like, "What fucking ever?" <laughs> like we're just gonna throw uh, whatever. No, out. and and I actually like that it's half and half because there are some good things that come out of the share universe with like uh, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, and uh, you know I like Margot Robbie's uh, Harley Quinn. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and honestly, the more I think about it, most of the things she's been in, because I did like Birds of Prey, I like the new Suicide Squad, uh, you know, but at the same time, adore Joker, I, you know, the Batman looks good, I'm glad to see a different well, take on it, so I, I like that they can do seeing kind of the, there were so many positives to what Marvel did, but now we're kind of seeing the negative, where it's like they yeah. kind of blew all their load on Infinity War, and now it's just very much like, game, yeah. eh, like there's some things i like i'm not like i did enjoy loki but there's a lot of things that a lot of people are like kind of divisive about like i don't know like it's like i kind of got marveled out on it whereas the dc I, I think stuff they're, i'm I still think they're banking kind of like, they're banking on the shared universe stuff which if if they go the route they're making it look like they're gonna go will be very clever uh i think that's the next logical route to get people excited again but if there's only so many things they can get the copyrights to, then yeah, you know, it's something where I feel like you probably don't want to half-ass it. But I'm, I'm fine if it's not a shared universe. Yeah, yeah, me too. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. Rob, if you and Doug are going to review Birds of Prey for Freak Show Cinema, does this mean you'll finally watch the movie? I promise that all the talk about Ewan McGregor being amazing in it is true. Maybe, oh, no, maybe I'll, I'll have him I'll, over. I'll, I'll watch the movie, because like, Doug's going to force me to. So, But I... Hmm. It, Sometimes, you know, they're just movies where it's not that you're actively avoiding them. It's just like you just kind of forget about them. And it's like, oh, what am I going to watch? And I'll think of something else. And then later I'm like, oh, I should have watched Birds of Prey. Oh, well. Like, and, and, just, and heads, I'm not heads, actively avoiding it. It just kind of happened that way. <laughs> I'll give you a heads up, too. It's not like a great movie. You know, it's, it's not fun. like, oh, you're missing the most amazing whatever. It's a fun movie that's got some cool stuff in it, particularly. Ewan I'll McCray's take it if it's program. hilarious garbage. <laughs> yeah, that's, I think that's what it is. Cyber Neko, thank you for the 201 bits. No message, just bits. Thank you. Thank you. Antari, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, remember in your Avatar 2009 review, you mentioned great examples at Good World Building, Amazon's Upload, Spider-Verse, and others. Amphibia will be another great example of both rich characters and environments. Can't wait for you to experience it. Thank you. Uh, it'll be sometime next year. <laughs> Mark Creation, thank you for the 50 bits. Would you say you'd play through any other Kingdom Hearts games on here? And if not, to review them, then at least just for fun? Uh, maybe I'll say in the one after Kingdom Hearts 3, because at least at that point I'm caught up, and I think it would make sense to play after that. Mm -hmm. But that'd probably be next year. I, I don't think I'd do it uh, for this year's uh, Disney Sember. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. Who is your favorite character from the Godfather movies? 
Uh, um, uh, Fredo's the most hilarious. I'm yeah, uh, <laughs> what you would call it? Uh, but Robert Duvall's character—I forget his name, but uh, oh, the yeah, the yeah. the lawyer. Um, yeah, he's really good. Uh, I I really like Robert De Niro as Vito. Mm-hmm. Like that's probably my favorite part of the whole story. Like that's why I like Godfather too. You see those bookends at the beginning and the end. Um, yeah, probably Vito. Retro Station, thank you so much for gifting that sub to Matt Hanna. Appreciate that. Thank you. Talkative Carl, thank you for the 50 bits. I have an idea that would be fun for each of the NC crew's birthday. You guys should do one roast each, like the roast of Doug Walker, roast of Tamara Chambers, and so on. Yeah, that'd be cute. (laughs) Turtle Power, thank you for the 50 bits. You mentioned before that you were thinking of doing Birds of Prey and Lemony Snicket as a freak show cinema and one as a full review. What determines what movie gets which treatment it kind of depends how i want to talk about it like both those movies i like but i can't see myself like sitting down and going through it in order and talking about like what works what doesn't and throwing in jokes where with the freak show cinema i like i could just talk about it as a whole um and yeah for limity snicket and uh uh birds of prey that, that it feels more like the way to go with it Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. What are your thoughts on Laura DeMille and the sisterhood of Dada in Doom Patrol? Uh, So I like Laura. I don't know about you, Rob, but I thought the whole subplot was really boring. (laughs) Are you Uh, the same or did you get into it? I'm I'm fine with it. The show's so low-key in its own weird way. It was all right, but it's not... It's definitely not as good as I think the first couple seasons um, well I was, saying, I was actually more interested when they went on vacation in the first couple episodes yeah than, i know like, right you know, um, when like the story started going i'm kind of like this is all right i, 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 I <laughs> like what i like what's her face the the time traveler yeah uh, and her arc going full sir like so but it, i don't know it's it's fine i don't dislike it um <laughs> it's just the, that first season was so good that it's like hard to compete so mm-hmm. I know, guys, thank you for the 50 bits. Would you think a true story would be better if they focused on one point in time instead of multiple points in time? Oh, it just depends how they want to do it. Uh, I always loved, uh, I forget the name of it. It, it, I think it's just called Steve Jobs. I'm not sure, but it was a biography on Steve Jobs. It was told through three different, like, presentations he's about to give and how obsessive he was and how kind of crazy he was. And then we keep flashing back to what led up to those moments. And I thought that was brilliantly done. I thought that was so clever and you got such a good understanding of who this guy was. Uh, And that was playing around with different points in time. Uh, But then there's other stories where it's like, no, just beginning to end. That's the best way to tell it. Uh, So yeah, I think it just- Just don't do it like Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. (laughs) Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. Which guest villain from Cowboy Bebop was your favorite? Uh, I'm assuming since you said guest villain, I can't say vicious. <laughs> I was gonna say like I don't, I don't know what I don't know what guest villain. Perot Lefou, he was pretty good. Um, the I liked the one uh, was sympathy for the devil. I don't remember mm. the name of the villain, but the kid. There was something so creepy about that damn kid. Um, well, what's the one with the uh, guy that just keeps laughing? He's the bigger guy that like flies that's around. Lefou. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that that dude was fun. Um, the one I the the one stuck in the computer, like kind of dream world, and like kind of a leader of a cult. Um, is one of the later episodes. That was also good. Um, yeah. I guess those are three. Matt, Hannah, thank you for the fifty bits. I wonder if Red Dead Redemption Two will be a good game to play. <laughs> I don't know, Doug. Do you have three years? <laughs> Oh, for oh, I think for the Twitch stream, I thought like, yeah, okay, sorry, I thought like, oh, two, is that like a new game coming out? It's like, no, that's been around for a while now, Doug. Yeah, nice. <laughs> um, it, it, does it take a while? I'm yes, assuming. Yes, yeah, it's kind of <laughs> open world. I don't know if it would be your jam, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I mean, it looks cool. I've seen like, I've heard people you could talk do about Skyrim that in the same amount of time. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, probably not. Though I hear it's very cool. Mark Creation Studios, thank you for the 50 bits. I know that Heather owns the games, but hypothetically, do you think you'd ever want to play any of the three mainline Kingdom Hearts games again, just for fun in your own personal time alone? Uh, Again, I like, out of the three, I like the gameplay 
in three the most. It just felt like there were some most options when uh, fighting. Um, so uh, I guess I wouldn't mind that. But if I was going to do that, I might as well just play one of the other games, the spinoff games, because, uh, um, you know, because I haven't played those. I'm sure they're just as much fun. Retro Station, thank you for the 100 bits. I now have a PS5. Congratulations. Nice. It weighs an imperial shit ton. Review <laughs> Chomps. Benji is a robot dog who fights crime. Oh, that's right. Uh, somebody was telling us that last. I'm assuming it's you. Uh, <laughs> I'll try to look into it. Talkative Carl, thank you for the 50 bits. Heather, I don't know if you're going to bring this up Saturday, uh, but I recently heard the MCU might be changing Kamala Khan's embiggening powers. They're worried the audience might get confused when they bring Mr. When they bring Mr. When they bring in, sorry, Mr. Fantastic. I think that's dumb, and Marvel can't trust we would know the difference. Yeah, it's kind of silly. Yeah, which character? I'm sorry. Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan. Oh, oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Isn't that a term on this? I want to say The Simpsons or something. Embiggening? I don't know. That's yeah. what she calls it. Her embiggening Embiggened. powers. Yeah, like, I just, I feel like I heard that term somewhere else as a joke. I can't remember where. Horace, thank you for the 50 bits. Doug, when you talked about the scene in Rise of Skywalker, uh, Opera House, you talked about the Emperor making up a legend about Plagueis, but it's obvious from the scene that he was the apprentice. There is even a book, Darth Plagueis, which roughly tells the truth, except the Plagueis saw him also as a son. Ah, but well, is that still canon? Uh, well, After the movie was <laughs> Revenge of the Sith, and if you can't get that right... Oh, sorry, I just... I, they used... Did you read they, it wrong? No, I did. They, re they used acronyms. They used acronyms, so, like... Oh, you, Heather, you yep. got it wrong. Yep, I'm well, awful, I know. Actually, Heather, it's Revenge of the Sith. Sorry, it was an acronym, I, I missed a letter. I didn't read the books. I thought... I didn't know 100% if that was the thing. I no, kind of thought were it was, but it was never stated uh, in the movie. So. No, no, they, they were hinting very heavily at it, which is fine. I like still not knowing, which is to say it's cool if they write a book and go more into it. Again, look at Clone Wars. They went to a lot more detail about stuff that's awesome. Uh, but I like that the movie doesn't make it 100% clear uh, and it's left open a little bit. But yes, I, I agree. They're hinting very strongly towards that. Dillbomb, thank you for the 50 bits. Favorite Harrison Ford role slash film that isn't Star Wars or Indiana Jones? I really like him in The Fugitive. You know, um... Uh, regarding Henry was really good. A lot of people, I guess, didn't like that movie when it came out, and I thought he was just great in it. Uh, total, I, I thought it was like Tom Hanks when like he played a kid. I just totally believed he was kind of uh, brought back to this mindset again. I mean, it was totally believable. So, yeah, uh, I'll go with that one. JC Film Student, thank you for the 50 bits. Just graduated film school for screenwriting. Love your work. Sweet. Wondered if you took recommendations for reviews. There's a superhero movie called Legend of the White Dragon coming next year, and I'd love to see your take on it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, never even heard of it. Uh, I'll try to check it out. Yeah, and congratulations on graduating yeah, film school. Yeah, congrats, man. Congrats. That Disney nerd, thank you for the 100 bits. Hi-ho. Hi-ho. Now that Nostalgia Ween is over, it's off to commercial specials in December we go. Disney December we go. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was going to say, no, no, there's another review we do before the commercial special. But the more I think about the review, it's kind of a commercial special, isn't it, Rob? <laughs> what do you really think about it? <laughs> yeah, it is definitely a commercial special. It's one giant commercial special. Um, oh, yeah, so next week, is that what we're writing? Uh, oh, the commercial special? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Alan, thank you for the 50 bits. So, Heather is a giraffe, Rob is a dinosaur. Doug, what are you? Uh, I'm Batman. Great. Talking of Carl, thank you for the 50 bits. I found out recently that in Force Awakens, spoiler alert, oh my god, um, I guess if you haven't seen Force Awakens yet, spoiler alert, I'll give you a thumbs up when okay. we're done. Okay, that movie's like 20 years yeah. old now. <laughs> well, it's not 20 years old, but yeah. After Han Steel. died and Chewie had been in his crosshairs, there was a storyboard where Chewie flashes back when he was playing with Kid Ben and chose to wound instead. Can you imagine how much more impactful it would be if he writes, sorry, if the writers let Chewie die in that explosion and Ben had to witness that? Oh, in Rise of Skywalker. Oh, Rise of... Okay, um, now I get it. Uh, I, I hope that scene wasn't done right as Han Solo got stabbed, because that'd be weird. Yeah. Just cut to a flashback with Chewie. Um, 
Yeah, in a weird way, I mean, it's like Killing Chewie is already a little weird if they were going to do that. I mean, we know they don't, but it's one of those things where I was like, all right, at least there's like some stakes so back in this. That movie had no cojones. Yeah. The way no. it just did that, and it's like 10 seconds later, they're like, whoop, whoop, sorry, just kidding. I'm like, fuck off. Uh, so, yeah, I, I guess I would have meant more, but uh, I don't think it would have fixed the movie. <laughs> Anu, thank you for the 50 bits. What I could dig up, in 2023, there'll be a Barbie live-action movie with Rob, with Robbie Margot. Mar do you mean Margot uh, Robbie? Margo. Yeah, sorry, they they wrote Robbie Margot. Um, oh, okay. Margot Robbie as a Barbie... As her brother. What? As her brother. <laughs> as Barbie self might be worth a watch since she's such a doll in both themes and of the word that is. Uh, I heard something about that, yeah. Uh, hope it's good. Mark Creation, thank you for the 50 bits. Would you ever consider reaching out to Haley Joel Osment to cameo in a video in the future as Sora or Vanitas? I'm sure he'd totally be down for it. I'm sure I've made some jokes at his expense. I don't know if that'd be wise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. In, in country See what kind of a sense of humor he has for us. Or Tusk. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I usually try to be kind, but it's like, um, I'm sure I've done some jokes at his expense. I doubt he'd be down for it. Oh. Really quickly, I don't normally interrupt. I just want to, because it was answering an earlier question, uh, Luke the Boss 7 says, Okay, Rob, so I found out Embiggen was in the Simpsons episode, Lisa the Iconoclast. That's where she tries to expose Jebediah Springfield. That is the one. Thank you. I knew it was a Simpsons reference. Teja Payne, thank you for the 50 bits. What series would you like to see an anthology series on? I would honestly love to see an anthology series on Lord of the Rings. Uh, hmm. Yeah. I mean, that would be good. Uh, I guess Batman's kind of been done to death. Uh, Dune? Because I just don't know how many they're going to make. Uh, uh, I mean, you've got Children of Dune. Like, Dune keeps going and going and going. <laughs> I mean, one of my favorite, like, movie universes, I, I just love whenever a movie comes out of Sin City, which is already an anthology, but it's like, I'll take, like, ten more of those, man. I love them. Maybe a low-key Mad Max. Like, you don't have oh. all the car chases, but it's just him wandering the desert and, you know, discovering shit. <laughs> I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Even though the Suicide Squad wasn't a success, James Gunn is still working with DC. Also, Brendan Fraser has just been cast as the villain of the HBO Max Batgirl movie. Thoughts? Cool. Nice. Um, Love it. Yeah, hope it goes well. We're all here for the Renaissance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Are you happy that Dune is getting a part two in 2023? Oh, God, yes. yes. I, like, <laughs> breathed a sigh of relief. I was like, oh, thank Christ. Because oh, I was just like, I do not want to, like, have this be the only movie uh, and then just stop here. I'm really curious to see if the actor who plays Paul, because it's like, I get why he was kind of so flat during the movie. That's kind of the idea. I thought he still played it pretty well. Uh, but I was saying there should have been a shift at some point. A shit gets real shift. I'm curious if they're going to do that in the sequel. Or is he still going to have Why kind of that? The, yeah, you said that, but Doug, that all happened within the span of like a couple days. They're going to see that right away. Um, well, I, again, that's why I'm curious to see if they're going to do that in this one, in yeah. the second but one. See, he uh, was, but that's how Paul was in the book, in the first part. I know, but um, there's still... It's still Lynch's you can version, the miniseries version, I think get the teenage Paul completely wrong. Like, it's just obvious, like, they, they just are so old-looking yeah, that no, I'm I like, agree, it I doesn't... Th like, this guy's such a waste. Yeah, I like they actually got a boy. Yeah, he looks like a very lanky yeah. teenager, even though I think he's in his mid-20s. <laughs> Talkative Carl, thank you for the 50 bits. Doug and Rob, do you think most directors know or should know that a lot of people probably prefer a majority of a film should have practical effects with little CGI or at least merge the two equally rather than over rely on CGI to carry the film? They don't care. It's CGI now is the it's the lazy option. Well, and let's so be honest, going to do that. Uh, let's be honest, majority of people we care, but the majority of people don't. They just want something that looks nice and convincing enough. Because uh, if they did care, they stop going to see the movies. Uh, they say, "Oh no, it looks too fake. We can't take it." Um, I I'm kind of with you though. I, I like the merging of the two. I, I think the best effects use, you know, a variety of different ways to do it to confuse the eye too. So, um, but uh, yeah, I think we care. I don't think the average moviegoer does really. And I, I want to make something clear. I'm not disparaging cgi artists and programmers i'm not saying they're mm. lazy they put in a ton of hard work 
But when it comes to the directors and the, and the people putting the film together, it's like, okay, we got to figure out how to do all these things practically and build all these models. Are we just handed to the computer guys in post? Like, yeah, it's I mean, kind of lazy budget wise. in that sense. Well, and budget wise, too, I'm sure it's a yeah. lot cheaper. Hey, Japan, thank you for the 50 bits. So, for CA Halloween party, Doug will be Xehanort. Who will be Aqua? Rob? No, I want to be <laughs> Aqua. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rob, you you don't know who Aqua is, do you? No. That's You're fine. You're gonna look beautiful. <laughs> that Disney nerd, thank you for the hundred bits. Heather dresses as as a giraffe on Steam. Me. Welcome to Giraffic Park. <laughs> thank you. Giraffe. It's bad, no expense. Yeah. Chorus, thank you for the 50 bits. So maybe a full review of the Tangled series instead of the seasons. Disney December is good but short, and a full review like this, you'll have more time and place to tell what suits you and what doesn't. The series deserves it. Uh, I mean, I'm just doing, I'm just doing a Disney December. <laughs> um, I, I feel like I can get my thoughts out in that. Um, the one thing that'll be tricky. I'm assuming you've seen the show is doing it without going into spoilers, particularly like with season three, that'll be a little tricky, but uh, I think I can do it. And honestly, I think I can get all my thoughts out uh, with that. Fine. I know guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Will you review Flora and Ulysses for Disney December? Maybe I am looking for um, a few other. Oh, wait, no, I think I got, I think I'm, because they had a bunch of movies that were coming out and then they pushed them back so yeah i think they're all filled up now with the ones i was gonna do so uh no not this year at least i gotta see that movie i really liked the book it's cute alan thank you for the 50 bits what is something an animated form tv show or movie you all would love to see on disney that for disney to do a live action movie or disney plus show for me i want gargoyles uh, oh, oh, it's uh, something animated yeah. they want to see as live action. Got yes. It. That might be um, the only one I can think of. Hmm. Yeah, Gargoyles would be pretty cool. Uh, We've also talked about a live action hunchback that's closer to the Broadway show. That'd yeah, cool. yeah. The stage show. I, I'd be down for that. There's not Again. many, though, because Disney's milked them all already, and most of them are pretty terrible. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> Turtle Power, thank you for the 50 bits. Did you see the Wicked movie by the In the Heights director is being pushed back again? I don't even like the musical, but it's crazy that it was supposed to shoot in L.A. in 2004, and it might now be filmed in the U.K. in 2022, maybe? Uh, I mean, sucks, but I mean, like... It's vapor I... film. It's never coming out. <laughs> um, I'm curious to see how they do a lot of stuff in that because i did like the show uh and, and i like the story too so i'm really curious to see how uh how cinematically they do a lot of that stuff lorenz thank you for the 50 bits have you watched the netflix adult animated series inside job created by gravity falls alumni yet if not why it's amazing if you have when will we get the doug reviews or perhaps even sibling rivalry of season one I guess I could do a I could do a fast video on it because uh, I do have a lot to say about it. I really liked it. Uh, yeah, like, like I, I was saying before, my I only nitpick <laughs> uh, my only nitpick is when it tried to be. It's kind of the same problem with Animaniacs when it's trying to be about something. I'm not as into it. I like it more when it's more chaotic and anarchy and stuff like that. Uh, not to say like other shows like whatever Always Sunny or uh, Rick and Morty, they don't have moments of consciousness. You know, having a conscience too, but they work up to it a little bit more. This one dived a little too quickly into it, but uh, but even then, it's not awful. Like, the stuff with her and her dad is really good. So, uh, yeah, I, I thought it was good writing. I like the characters. I want to see a season two. Turtle Power, thank you for the 50 bits. Would you ever review the 1967 version of Casino Royale? Six different directors and nine writers worked on it. It has 14 different James Bonds. Woody Allen plays an evil version. His plan is to unleash a virus that makes all women hot and kills all men over five foot six. Oh, I've seen it. It's something. <laughs> You know, I've never seen it all the way through. I probably should. I mean, because I know it really, like, doesn't even really count as a James Bond movie, you know? I mean, it technically does, but, yeah, they're clearly doing its own thing. Um, I should sit down and watch the whole thing at some point. Luke the Boss, thank you for the 50 bits. So I'm not asking this in bad faith. I'm just genuinely curious. 
So you say you don't do certain reviews because they will not get the views the ad people probably want, but were a lot of people really wanting you to review the lawnmower man? Again, not trying to be snarky, I'm just curious. Um, if so, it's kind of funny to me. Oh, no, it's a, a Stephen King property. People show up for the Stephen King ones. And honestly, some of them I'm just like, I kind of take a little bit of a gamble, but not much. Like, I know there's a fan base for it. And it's weird. I'm trying to get this sense now of, like, what people want to see. Like, for some reason, I had a feeling like the mask would do really well and Atlantis would do really well. And I think it was after I saw that Roger Rabbit did really, really good. Uh, so it sort of gave me an idea of, like, okay, like, ones that I'm passionate to talk about, but also kind of have this hidden fan base of people that are like, yeah, more people should talk about that, you know, kind of thing. So it's not that I'm getting like people requesting it, but I just have a feeling like people are going to want to click on it. So, but I'm not always right. Dusta Monster, thank you for the 50 bits. Hey, Doug, I have two suggestions for your Freak Show Cinema segment. One is Jack and the Cuckoo Clock Heart, an Italian animated movie from an album based on a book all made by the same guy. The other is Repo, the Genetic Opera, a macabre musical directed by the guy behind several Saw movies, including Spiral. Uh, I I should see Repo at some point. I love uh, Repo. Uh, yeah, uh, Repo <laughs> scares me again because of the music, so that might be tricky. Um, but it is worth talking about because it does have such a following. And I have seen that uh, Cuckoo Clock Heart one, uh, oh. and I did like it. Um. I always kind of forget about it, though, and I find other people do, too. So, yeah, maybe it's worth actually talking about. Um, yeah, I'll think about both of those. Matt Hanna, thank you for the 50 bits. We've heard Door to Darkness so many times, but we have yet to hear in Mickey voice, did somebody say McDonald's? <laughs> <laughs> did somebody say the Golden Arches? <laughs> Make mine come with cheese. <laughs> Talking of Carl, thank you for the 50 bits. I heard Idris Elba might try not to make Knuckles sound sexy in Sonic 2. Maybe some people are concerned about a sexy voiced Knuckles. I honestly don't see how that's possible. It is Idris Elba we're talking about, though. I was going to say, Idris Elba, it's impossible for him not to sound sexy. Right, right. <laughs> that's why I thought it was Even... such weird casting. I'm like, Knuckles? <laughs> for, like, the most smooth-talking man in the world? <laughs> Was he uh was he a villain in one of the new Star Trek movies, Idris Alba? I don't know. I forget. Wait, wait, was he like uh, under all that makeup? There's some sort of really dignified actor in the third that one. That may have been in what the third one, maybe? Yeah, I, I was gonna say if that was him, even then we used to try to sound like this, he still sounded kind of sexy. <laughs> Why disappoint the furries? Let him have the sexy voice. <laughs> <laughs> I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. How do you feel about Bill Murray being in Ant-Man 3? Oh, I didn't know that. that yeah. Why not? He just kind of dropped it. I don't think he was supposed to say anything, but it just he that just said that this that's week. so Murray. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It also sounds like something that he would just say and then just, like, make it so. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm going to be in one of those Marvel yeah, movies. <laughs> Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. What is the funniest moment in Spaceballs for you that didn't, that did not come from a villain? Oh, man. Uh, I, the one I quote all the time, uh, particularly when you're, you're dealing with like an obnoxious Karen or something, is uh, fairy tales over, princess. Welcome to real life. <laughs> I, I like the, uh, just because of the actor, I like the priest uh, scenes uh, and Princess Valium. Sorry, it's the hair. Prince Valium. Are you getting married? No. Then get over there. What, do what's you? your name? Yeah, do you? Bar yeah, great. What's your married. full name? Bartholomew. Yeah. Are you in the wedding? No. Then get over there. <laughs> yeah, I, I just love that actor. He's in a lot of Mel Brooks stuff. Turtle Power, thank you for the 50 bits. Have you ever thought about reviewing any of the Pink Panther movies? The Steve Martin the Steve Martin one was shot as an R, then re-edited into a PG, and the last Peter Sellers one was filmed after his death using deleted scenes from the previous movies. Uh, Steve Martin ones are... I mean, they suck, but it's hard to do, like, bad comedies because you just end up saying, like, well, that's not funny. Yeah, th there's two reasons I won't. One is I... I like them fine. I never got that into them. I don't know why. I should, but I never got into the Pink Panther movies that much. Uh, and two, there's a real good um, analysis of them by a guy named uh, Hats Off Entertainment. He did 
all the movies and went into great detail about him. And he is a diehard fan. And I feel like if someone's going to talk about him, you want someone that's really passionate about it. So uh, go check that out. Mark Creation Studios, thank you for the 50 bits. Would you ever consider doing a, to a Kingdom Hearts Top 11 or 13 video? <laughs> God, everyone just be like, you left this out, you left this out, because I've only played three games. <laughs> uh, so probably not. Turtle Power, thank you for the 50 bits. Speaking of that Pink Panther sequel, do you think actors being, oh my gosh, I never know how to say it, posthumously inserted into movies? Oh, posthumously. Thank you. Would be uh, inserted into movies, would make for a good editorial. The ethics, the changing technology might be interesting to talk about. Hmm. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like we've talked about, like, CG, using CG to bring people back, but that's usually about effects. Uh, maybe. We'll see. Teja Payne, thank you for the 50 bits. Favorite James Bond song? Oh, um, uh, I like Goldeneye. Uh, Goldeneye, and I like... Uh, I'm sorry, world. not Goldeneye. Well, I do like Goldeneye, too. Oh, uh, Goldfinger. Goldfinger. Uh, um, I think uh, World's Not Enough by uh, Garbage, I really like. Um, I love Skyfall. S Skyfall was pretty good. I have to hear it again. Um, I don't remember. The Adele one? Was... When the sky falls, makes you cry. Oh, okay. The, movie, the movie's hilariously yeah. awful, but I, I, if I remember right, I think I did like View to a Kill. Oh, and I actually did kind of like the new one, too, with the Billie Eilish. Uh, Hell dish. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that was pretty good, too. I'm just a Billie Eilish stan, though. So I think Goldfinger, though, is the the gold standard, haha. Because like I just feel like all of them kind imitated. of took a cue from that somehow. Madonna didn't. <laughs> no, but that one sucks. Oh, it was awful. That was so bad. <laughs> I know, well, guys. Thank you for the fifty bits for my house arrest bont bounty idea. What would a good title be? I was thinking something like the Pin Down or Confined. No, I kind of like uh, House Arrest Bounty, honestly. <laughs> Tage of Pain, thank you for the 50 bits. Favorite and least favorite Organization 13 members? Uh, I mean, Axel, come on. Uh, come on. Uh, least favorite? I, I mean, I don't know. I feel like I didn't get to know them well enough because <laughs> I did play the other games. Uh. I don't know, the, the eye patch guy, because I forgot about him so quickly. When he showed up, I'm like, who is that? <laughs> so I guess I'll say him. <laughs> All right, that's fair. That's fair. Orlando Garcia, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Doug, my oldest brother is wondering if there's another collab between Corey, with Corey Taylor in the future. Uh, Nothing's planned. Um, yeah, Probably well, not a musical, though. Yeah, th th yeah, definitely. There's no probably about it. <laughs> There's definitely a hard never. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're not planning on anything. Yeah, no, uh, he was just in town when we did uh, too many games and uh, we met up. But uh, I mean, the guy is so much fun. I mean, that's just you have one conversation with him. You're just good for like hours. You're just like, oh, my God, like so much was said. And he talked about it. He's like such a good storyteller. <laughs> And a great Dan Aykroyd impression. Yeah, it turns who the out. fuck would have thought? He does a really great impression of Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> Turtle Power, thank you for the 50 bits. Hey, Rob, you've mentioned before that you're a fan of the Golden Compass. Did you see that a fan on YouTube uploaded a reconstruction of the movie's originally filmed ending? Yes, they really did at least have the balls to film the book's ending, even if they did cut it. I have got to see that. Uh, the, do you know the name of the YouTube channel if you throw it in chat? But I, I really want to see that. That's amazing. Well, sure I did not know in, that. Like... I didn't know it was that. Like, well, I guess I knew kind of it was filmed. I didn't know somebody had access to it. <laughs> yeah, Turtle Power, if you, if you know it, send it. Fish, thank you for the 50 bits. Have you ever thought of reviewing Halloween 3 as a freak show cinema? I love that movie so much. <clears throat> you know... Happy, happy I, Halloween. <laughs> I was going to say, with the exception of a handful of scenes, I don't get into that movie. I think it's mostly you boring. You are wrong. I, it's and you go to hell. Well. No, but like the scenes that stand out, everyone remembers and I really do like, and they're so cool. But I mean, it's maybe 
15, 20 minutes of movie <laughs> in a two hour movie. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, I always have a soft spot for it. I'll always give a shout out to it, but yeah, I, I actually remember most of it. I've never more. been more disappointed in you. I know, I know it, it's like, but yeah, I, I still have a soft spot for it, but yeah, most of it's boring. <laughs> McMedia, thank you for the 100 bits. Will we one day get a combination of my two favorite content from your show, a real thoughts on your commercial specials? Which commercials back in the day was either your favorite catchy or batshit memorable? Fucking bubbles. <laughs> um, uh, Wonder, I mean, Wonder Boner, the wet banana one was good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love the, I, I love them. The milk ones are just the milk ones, but I love what we did with it by turning her into this crazy person out for revenge against her brother. She mm -hmm. goes down this sad story arc. Uh, yeah, I mean, all those are pretty good. Uh, whether or not we'll do a video, I don't know, but uh, that might be better like after we've retired, Nostalgia Critic. <laughs> you don't do that. All the PSAs, too. Yeah. Orlando Garcia, thank you for the 100 bits. Question for all three. Favorite Impractical Joker and why? Like, the show? In I never watched the show. So. I didn't yeah, I, either. I didn't show. I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Would the Sonic movie be worth a review when Sonic the Hedgehog 2 comes out in April? I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I mean, my own fans... You know, I, I'm down with you all. Yeah, oh. uh, but uh, yeah, there's be. I mean, there are some people that take that stuff really, really seriously. Uh, but so don't ever tell them that the fan base can be a little, you know, excessive because that just makes them more angry. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. If I did, I would want it to be like. I, I wouldn't mind going more into it because I did open up a little bit more about like fans really waiting for something they could hold on to that was really sonic and like that was a huge victory changing it's the design stock, of him it's and it looked so Syndrome. cool of it. it was it was not the worst thing ever and therefore they thought somehow that was great like, i mean that's that's how an abduction works you start identifying yeah, with the person so like well they're weird. not treating me like absolute garbage therefore uh, but but i do see like with the other stuff they've gotten it's like yeah maybe i would be like hey that's a victory too and yeah it is by cool the low Sonic standards on the big, that have already it is cool been set. Sonic on the big screen you know so yeah i don't know uh i i just don't know probably not <laughs> but i don't know i'd have to figure out how to do it very delicately but i am i am hoping the next one is better like i i would love to see a good sonic movie so yeah I've, no i've no never said that was the worst thing ever yeah. it's just is that what you really wanted a 90s road buddy movie okay <laughs> orlando garcia thank you for the hundred bits hi heather hi cypher thank you for the hundred bits big ups to the noise rob has the riddler make when he has a breakdown in the batman returns fan scription i love that part <laughs> oh, thank you. That was, I don't remember what I did. <laughs> Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. Have you ever seen Pan? It really has to be seen to be believed on how bad it is. Hugh Jackman did everything he could to save it, but still failed. I have it. We ordered it. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, one of these days I'll do uh, a review of that. I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Do you think you'll, uh, you'll, sorry, do you think you'll review Dora and the Lost City of Gold or Angry Birds 2? I haven't seen that many reviews of those films. Uh, I mean, they're both good. Uh, Dora is, you can't really review it. Like, it, it's self aware and it, it is good. I enjoy it. Yeah, I can't think of what I would say that would be like unique or that I could add to it. I mean, it's just a good movie with good performances. Um, and kind of the same thing with Angry Birds, too. Like, it's just funny, and it's a good time, you know? It's like, I can't think of too much else I could really add that'd be unique, so probably not. But, you know, I've said no to things before, and they've happened. Bernsey, thank you for the 50 bits. Thanks for your review of Halloween Kills. Are there many cricket leagues in Haydenfield, Illinois? Cricket leagues? Yep. <laughs> uh, no. Well, you know... Haddonville is a very uh, toxic place. Some even argue it's so toxic that it doesn't exist. But uh, uh, I, I don't know. I, I think there's still a lot of um No, I have no end. Well, as, so. as the first movie also <laughs> taught us, there aren't palm trees in Illinois either. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Orlando Garcia, thank you for the hundred bits. Oh, also, is that an Emmy behind you? No, no, it's not. Stupid Emmys. <laughs> I'm playing a 
Metroid Dread right now, and the Emmys are just absolutely oh, nice. kicking my butt sometimes. <laughs> I gotta get that and start playing. It's fun. I would recommend. Teja Payne, thank you for the 50 bits. What are your thoughts on Mamoru uh, Hos Hosoda movie, The Boy and the Beast? Also, because last bits of the night, Heather the Giraffe Hoodie is adorable, but I'm constantly expecting you to coldly stare at the camera and say, you've wrought this. Boy, is that an anime? I have not heard of that one. Oh, oh, I have heard of this. I have not seen it, though. It did look good. Uh, yeah, I have not seen it, though. McMedia, thank you for the 100 bits. Will you do an old versus new of Dune 84 and Dune 2021? Um, if you do, would you wait for the second movie in 2023? If we did, I'd say wait for the second one. <laughs> yeah, I... I don't, and I love David Lynch. And there's we're still doing this nonsense, then. <laughs> yeah, there's things I like in that movie, but that's another one. I'm like, it's just too boring. I can't do it. It's so boring. Shut your dirty mouth. <laughs> Movie's amazing. Sailor Aaron, thank you for the hundred bits. Last week, I got Abbott and Costello meet the mon meet the monsters collection DVD. I remember in sixth grade, I was introduced to them when they meet Frankenstein, and I'm excited to see the other three movies. Have any of you seen Abbott and Costello meet the monsters? They're great Halloween movies. It's Frankenstein. <laughs> um, I, which Years one did ago. I, I? Yeah, I saw one. I mean, I thought it was amusing. Um, I, mean, but I mean, like the, the technicals they have, how much they make it look like those monster movies is legit impressive, though, too. Um, but, uh, I don't like it well enough, but I saw it when I was so young that, like, Abbott and Costello, like, something I might appreciate a little more now. Mm. Uh, I remember them being very funny, though. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. Which Taika Waititi movie do you like more, Jojo Rabbit or Thor Ragnarok? Oh, Jojo Rabbit. Yeah. That had a way I mean, tougher job to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think almost on principle, I have to say Jojo Rabbit. <laughs> you just, all uh, you had to do with Ragnarok is just make Thor good. And it yeah. really wasn't as hard as we thought, it turns out, after two movies ever kind of meh. Uh, yeah, no, Jojo Rabbit's uh, very, very good. McMedia, thank you for the 50 bits. Have you seen anything of the Chucky series that's currently out? No, no. Uh, I haven't heard anything about either if it's good or bad or whatever. So, um, yeah, I'm behind on all. I didn't even see the last Child's Play, the Mark Hamill one. So I got a lot of uh, catching up to do. Anu, thank you for the 50 bits. Seen the new trailer for Masters of the, Masters of the Universe Revelation Part 2? Do hope it's a redemption from Part 1, though I liked Part 1. I liked Part 1 a lot, too, to be honest. Did, did, did you finish the whole thing? Did you yeah. get through it? Yeah. Okay. Um, honestly, and here's the funny thing, too. Because I was thinking, because I thought I didn't hate part one, but I thought it was kind of bland. Uh, the something I realized is everyone's like, eh, no He Man. I don't think that was the biggest problem. To me, it was no Skeletor. Yes. Like, in the original series, I'm realizing, like, yeah, if he took him out of that show, it wouldn't be interesting. Like, I know He Man's he -Man the one that's most interesting thing be. about the original No, but Skeletor anyway, is always fucking Skeletor. Great. Like, you have to have one of them, and it really has to be Skeletor, in my opinion. Or you gotta make the main character more interesting. So, it looks like he's front and center in this one. So, uh, I, I am more excited for that. Honestly, if He-Man... I mean, people watching know what happened. You know, they, they know the controversy. If he stayed dead, I could really care less. I think you need Skeletor <laughs> in there. That's, yep. like, the missing ingredient. <laughs> I could write a book about what you don't know. <laughs> Uh, really quickly, Turtle Power, uh, thanks for the info. I do see it in chat here. Turtle Power, thank you for the 50 bits. The thing that I think inspired The Matrix is the 70s Doctor Who episode where the Doctor has to escape inside a computer world where people are plugged in, fighting the various agents of the simulation along the way. This simulation is called The Matrix. Hmm. Oh, that's quite a kawinky dink. Yeah. Talking of Carl, thank you for the 50 bits. Heather and Rob, what would you like to do on Halloween to torment the neighbor kids? Mm, hand out dental floss. Ooh, <laughs> oh, you monster. <laughs> oh, God. I like the idea of handing out like CBD gummies and tell them they're just candy. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you remember. spend that much money, though? That shit's yeah. not oh, no, cheap. I love Stories that, that... following would be great. <laughs> I, uh, no, I always love that people are like, be careful, they're handing out ecstasy and something. It's like, yeah, because if you spend all that money on ecstasy, you really just want to hand it to random kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Fucking urban legends. Yeah. 
I know, well, guys, thank you for the 50 bits. Fun fact, Eternals is the lowest scored Marvel movie on Rotten Tomatoes. Also, I managed to see it early at the world premiere, and here are my thoughts. Eh. <laughs> I like fun uh, facts. Sounds more like a sad fact to me. Uh, you know, and obviously I haven't seen it yet, so I don't know. I am wondering if there is, if this is going to be similar, like when they got Ang Lee for Hulk or, um, I, oh, I always forget her name, but the one that did, uh, uh, you know, Selma, you know, for uh, uh, Wrinkle in Time. Uh, you know, they're getting these really great directors and like, well, they won Oscars and, and they're so good, man. Let's get them for our comic book movie because that's big visuals and, and stuff like that. And it's, it, it is different. I mean, it's a very different way you do this stuff. And some can do it very well. You know, Richard Donner did, you know, obviously Superman very well uh, and stuff. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm wondering. I'm wondering how this one's going to be. But, um, you know, I, I'll wait. I, I could see it and be like, yeah, Fuck y'all, it's great. <laughs> TDI Charlie Brown, thank you for that six-month subscription. Welcome back, appreciate that. Um, hey, love your dark tunes on Trick or Treat. Thank you. Yeah, no, I'm glad I got to one because, uh, yeah, I was uh, uh, behind on so much stuff, so I'm glad I could uh, do that. Turtle Power, thank you for the 50 bits. There's certainly a lot to talk about with the Snicket movie. The budget balloons to over 150 million because of Jim Carrey's antics. There's even a super dark ending where Count Olaf escapes that was cut, but you can see it in the in the trailer. I feel like I just heard that last week. Yeah, like, I think we did. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> but uh, okay, I will keep that in mind again. <laughs> McMedia, thank you for the 50 bits. What do you think about the Flash trailer with Michael Keaton's Batman doing the voiceover during it? I think it's a great looking Batman movie. Uh, didn't see too much of the Flash, I, but again, I, I, yeah, for, for I'm, a last I'm, minute little teaser, I mean, it's like, I thought it was pretty good. I'm excited, but it does make me sad that I'm just like, wow, the thing that gets me the most excited is referencing a 30-year-old movie. <laughs> like, I'm wondering who the other, like, there are other, like, flashes behind him in one scene uh, that that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Are there going to be, like, different versions? Uh, that that legit got me kind of excited. I'm psyched, because outside of Jack Frost, Michael Keaton can do no wrong. Godzilla fan, thank you for the 100 bits. I have an idea for a video game, and I want all three of your thoughts on a Storm solo video game. That'd be, uh... Storm. Oh, oh, Storm, like, from X-Men? Yeah. Oh. I feel like you need the X-Men to just do X-Men. But the Wolverine game looks dope. But Wolverine kind of always was a little bit of a lone wolf. I mean, yeah. yeah. The um, thing is, just, is Storm that popular of a character? Oh, she's That's the popular, problem with the X-Men. It's, it's like she holds so, her own, yeah. It's so uh, much of it is just kind of, like, Wolverine-based. Mm-hmm. Um... um I don't, I don't know. I mean, she's cool. Her backstory is cool and everything. So yeah, no, I'm I, just saying popular for it to be to be the solo in a game. I'm trying to think of any X Men because well, like, honestly, well, and and that's the thing now too. That's the thing now too is honestly, if you just make the game really good, I mean, who the hell would have thought we'd be talking about GoldenEye for Nintendo 64 years later? You know, like, you know, movie did okay, but it's like it's like one of the most famous games ever. So it's like if you make the game good, I mean, I think it's possible. Alexander, thank you for the 50 bits. Hi, Doug and Rob. What are some of your favorite Batman comics? Mine are probably Dark Knight Returns, The Long Halloween, Year One, Killing Joke, White Knight, and Hush. I mean, you listed some amazing ones say, right I there. Was say, oh, my. Of them are on uh, there. Year, uh, year One and Long Halloween. Arkham uh, Asylum. Um, I really like. The, yeah, uh, Hush, Hush is pretty good. I like Dark Knight Returns well enough, but hmm. I like more the influence it had than I. it's... It's not one of my favorites, though. Turtle Power, thank you for the 50 bits. In answer to your question from last week's stream, the reason why the Snicket Netflix show is similar to the movie is that it was made by Barry... Um, so Bonnie. Yep. He wrote and storyboarded the whole movie before being fired. The movie actually stole his shots and designs before his version came out. Weird. I thought I heard that, too. <laughs> yeah, I think it was. <laughs> I think really they, they said later that, sorry about any repeated questions, I had to leave chat early, so I don't know if they went through. Oh! Okay, okay. They did. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, no, uh, that's very interesting. Because, yeah, that, that was my thing. Even though I did like the show, I was like, oh, gee, this almost looks shot for shot. Like, <laughs> you know, the same. The makeup looks the same. And uh, it's interesting, too, because that did look like a Sign and Fell movie. And I was shocked to find out it wasn't, only to be shocked to find out it was. <laughs> Miser, thank you for the 50 bits. If you're going to play another Kingdom Hearts game, play Chain of Memories. That would be interesting to see you play. We'll see. Like I said, um, 
We'll see. Because I, I, I am interested in playing other games, like the other Kingdom Hearts games. But, like, which ones do I go to? Which ones do I get into? It's like, I, I don't know yet. McMedia, thank you for the 100 bits. Do you think that The Eternals is a bit too obscure for casual Marvel movie fans? And would they inadvertently muddy the water for the future X-Men movies with similar-looking power superpowers on display? Yes and yes. <laughs> I think you kind of nailed part of it. It's just like, if you're a casual fan, it's like... Who the hell are the Eternals? It's like, oh, well, this looks like Bargain like, Basement X Men. Like it. Well, but I mean, look at Guardians of the Galaxy. Nobody knew who they were, but they right. stood out big time. The, that um, trailer did a lot to sell Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. The Eternals trailer is. I'm just like, I feel yeah, like it, I could see a thousand blank. movies yeah. like this, which is part of the problem. The idea is interesting. Honestly, the thing that has me the most hooked is the uh, idea. Um, but yeah, everything else I've seen, I'm like, well, this just, just looks like another superhero movie, but, uh, I don't know. I, I'm still holding out a little hope. Cause like I said, I, I, I mean, I, I hope it's good. Like the, the, God, the, the critical, the, the, I don't know. It's got me a little scared. Cause like people are not being kind to it. Hmm. Nintendo man, thank you for the 50 bits. Hello, Doug. Congrats on making it through Kingdom Hearts. Any interest in playing Nier and Nier Automata to experience Yoko Taro's wild, wild ride? I um, went to Doug. And, you did? Uh, yeah, he didn't get very far. Oh, that's right. That's right. That is the name yeah. of that. Uh, I think it was when no. they made you start over and you got super pissed. You're like, fuck this. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, so I played I it games. again. No, I, I played it again and I was having fun, but I think I kept it. I was confused, so I kept doing the side missions. And as Heather knows, I hate doing side <laughs> missions. I'm just like, no, let me just play the goddamn game. It's cool these are here, I but we just told play the goddamn you what game. The main quest ones yeah, are. yeah. Rob was like, no, no, you're you quoted uh, Red Green saying, no, no, you're doing it wrong. 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 <laughs> uh, so uh, maybe one day I'll get back into it. But uh, yeah, I was legit having fun. I was just getting lost in terms of what I had to do. <laughs> Framizer, thank you for the 50 bits. Of the two run of the mill bad films you reviewed, which is the worst, Norma the North or the Emoji Movie? Oh. Hmm. Boy, that's a rough one. I'll say... Uh, Norm of the, I'm going to go with Norman the North just because the Emoji movie, you just knew it was going to be bad. You look at Norman the North and see all these celebrities and Elijah Wood, and it's like, you would think it would be better than it was. Uh, <laughs> I was almost going to say the exact opposite. I look at Nor oh, No, really? maybe you're right, because Emoji movie is such a dumb idea. Emoji movie had one or two sentences in it that I'm like, okay, that's a good line, or okay, there's a hint of a brain in this but but not much where there's nothing in norm of the north where i was like well that was pretty good it's like no nah, it was all pretty bad <laughs> they're both terrible we'll just yeah. we'll just settle for that <laughs> adam grunther thank you for the 50 bits do you think disney will actually make deadpool 3 rated r while touchstone was a way for the company to make their movies rated r marvel is much more connected to disney's brand well i think I it'll be want them to, but yep. to me it's an i'll believe it when i see it thing no, no, because I think they're going to release it under Fox, and that'll be their way around it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I think they are. I think people will yeah, I hope they still too do. crazy if they don't, and I think they know that. I think it would be a mistake if they didn't, yeah. Chorus, thank you for the 50 bits. I hope you'll do a review of Scooby-Doo and the Alien Invaders next year. Sequel, which ghost? He's good, not like zombie or witch, but still, it was Scoob's last dark part until Mystery Incorporated series, and the series you had the Nazi robot killing peoples. Jesus. Um, that was a mouthful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, no, a Nazi robots kill. Like, is that in this alien one? Oh, my God. Um, maybe. I don't know. A part of me was thinking, like, just retire the Scooby-Doo stuff. You know, just put out a compilation. But then somebody was like, there's one more live action Scooby-Doo one. I think it's called, like, Daphne and Velma or something like that. And I'm just like, I know that would get views. So we'll have to see. <laughs> Can, can I really quickly make a correction here as I'm looking at chat? Um, I misheard that as North, the movie North, and not Norm of the North. That may have okay. changed my answer. I was wondering. I'm like, I, 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 what was in Norm I, of the North? I know. I thought that. I thought that. Like when I heard Heather read it, I just heard North. Um, yeah. I don't. Emoji movie. I think is probably worse. <laughs> Sorry about yeah. that. <laughs> I said Norm of the North. No, no, no. I believe you. I just, for some reason, my brain just heard North. I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, Norm of the North. Oh, that's different. 
Anu, thank you for the 50 bits. Sure you know of Robert um, Engold, mostly because of his Freddy Krueger. Might just be me, but I think he would be a great Lord Zed in case they need a new version of the Power Rangers villain. That would be amazing. I would totally see that movie. <laughs> or I Ivan could see Ooze. that, too. I could see him as Ivan Ooze, too. <laughs> yeah, either. Sailor Aaron, thank you for the 200 bits. I'm just happy that down here in LA, we're finally getting cool, crisp fall weather. I had my Starbucks hot chocolate today. It was delicious. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, no, I love fall. We're enjoying it here. It's in like the 50s now. <laughs> and rainy, though. I wish it would stop raining. <laughs> yeah, I hate the rain. Uh, during fall, I hate the rain. <laughs> Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. Who was your favorite Studio Ghibli character? Ooh. Hmm. I like Kiki, Nausicaa. I love Kiki. Uh, yeah, Kiki's Porco, pretty good. Porco Rosso. Uh, yeah, Porco Rosso is great. I like the uh, the man with the long arms in Spirited Away. Um, that actually, I do oh, like. Uh, uh, was, it, was it Kaji? Kaji was something like that. I do like uh, Yubaba too. I don't know. They're all so great. Every character. Yeah, like... that's tough. There's too many great characters. <laughs> oh, and then the granny in uh, Castle in the Sky, the oh, pirate. Yeah. She was great. Oh, there's so many good. Characters. Oh yeah. She was good, too. God damn it, yeah. <laughs> I know, what guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Question. Last week when you said you would review a film that the Weinsteins ruined, what film are you referring to? Because there was a lot. <laughs> uh, well, I guess you'll just have to see next week. <laughs> I know, what guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Will you review Hoodwinked or Dougal? Hoodwinked is great, but the animation is awful, while Dougal, Dougal is one of the worst films to ever exist. It's just pop culture references mixed with fart jokes. I might do Dougal at one point, because when it came out, everybody wanted me to do it, and I never did. And I don't know, maybe it's getting that nostalgic callback of people saying, yeah, you remember that weird-ass movie? I never saw it. I did see Hoodwinked. Um, I have a friend that was telling me over and over, no, you gotta see it, it's really good. I'm like... Yeah, hi, what are you talking about? This looks terrible. Uh, and it actually was very clever. Um, so, yeah, I again, I don't know what I could add to it. And a lot of people do request it. Uh, so, I don't know. We'll have to see. Turtle Power, thank you for the 50 bits. I think the 67 Casino Royale would make for great WTF is, TF is happening review like Sleepwalkers. It ends with hundreds of different James Bonds blowing up and going to hell. <laughs> I gotta see this movie all the way through. <laughs> You've never seen the whole thing? Not the whole thing. No, I've seen bits. Nice. I've never seen the whole thing. I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Doug, do you think you could do a video focusing on Della Duck and her interesting backstory? Again, yeah, the views on that will be great. Um, <laughs> I mean, I like Della fine. I don't think I like her enough. I could do a whole video dedicated to her. But uh, I do have the DuckTales review uh, coming up, so you can hear me talk about her there. Godzilla fan, thank you for the 100 bits. Question for all. Thoughts on the Hit Monkey trailer? Did I see mm, that? Haven't seen it. Um, I'm pretty I sure. I'm going to look it up really fast. I'm pretty sure that is the animated Hulu series. Yeah. I, I think I did see it. Yeah. It looked, it looked interesting. I'm going to wait and see what other people say. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, it's one of those where I'm like, Oh, this looks fine. Oh, let's see if it's worth my time. If people are just like, no, man, this is really fucking great. Oh, it's crazy. You got to see it. Then I'll totally check it out. But people are like, yeah, it's all right. I, I probably won't watch it. Yeah, it didn't grab me, so. Hmm. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. Which main villain from Kingdom Hearts was your favorite? Ansem, Xemnas, or Xehanort? Uh... See, I gotta, Can we say Xemnas like, just for that voice, though? <laughs> I was gonna say, I think I'm gonna say Xemnas, because even Ansem, I'm just like, oh, which Ansem? Because there's like a couple of From them. From the first know? one. So it's the main villains of one, oh, the, the main villain of two, one. the main villain of three. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, yeah, a toss up between Ansem and uh, Xemnas. A toss up between them. Honestly, mostly just for their voices. I mean, Billy <laughs> Zane's voice and then uh, the Air Dude's voice. I mean, yeah, they, they, they were. Like I said, especially with headphones, you're like, oh. I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Do you think you have the Nostalgia Critic down? If so, when do you think we can expect the next crossover? Also, do you think you'll review Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 in the near future? Yeah, I've heard so much weird stuff about it. I should check it out. Um, and maybe sometime in the future. Uh, I, I know what you're talking about uh, with getting Nostalgia Critic down. Yeah, because we did... 
don't know, especially like during COVID, I was kind of in a weird spot where I'm like, eh, like, and even a little before it, I'm like, something's off. I, I like, I, I feel like I'm not evolving it. I'm, I'm not turning into something that it should naturally become. And now I feel like it kind of is. Uh, I feel like I'm in like a better spot with it. So, um, yeah, maybe next year uh, might start looking into that again. Yeah, I, I mean, especially just now getting done with like Christmas stuff, the commercials, just December, all that stuff. Uh, you know, I'm going to be super busy. But uh, yeah, maybe next year I'll uh, start looking into that again. PWO for life. Thank you for the 50 bits. Hey, Walker Bros. Love this Nostalgiaween intro. I know it's already too late, but for next Nostalgiaween, can you put the 1991 TV movie Strays as a review featuring Brad, Lloyd, and the rest of the Channel Awesome feline crew? Yeah, I was going to say, I don't even think I heard of it. Uh, it'll be a it cat's up. reunion. Um, I'll I'm a canyon. <laughs> Talking of Carl, thank you for the 50 bits. Doug, is the Wilkins coffee puppet returning for this commercial special? We'll have to see what commercials we have, because I was thinking about it, but then I'm like, okay, is he always going to pop up? Is that going to be the thing? I like that he, we always use lines from the commercials. Like, we never dub him over. I really like that. Um, but it does make it tricky. I'm sure to we'll, find, him. we'll find a way, maybe. I mean, we do like, still have the puppet. And even even if not this it. year, he'll come back again. You can't waste. Yeah, yeah, you can't that. waste something that funny. I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Do you think you'll review Jackass Forever forever when it comes out? I fucking love Jack Jackass. Oh, hell yeah. I love Jackass. Oh, my God. Uh, I was sad to see it was pushed to uh, February. I'm like, no! So looking forward to uh, seeing it soon, but oh well. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. What are your thoughts on the Coneheads movie? It's fun. I don't know. Because, like, yeah, when it came out, people hated it. And when I was a kid, I liked it fine. And then I start thinking back to him, like, yeah, what the hell was all that about? It's <laughs> really bizarre. Uh, so I, I think I got to see it again uh, to form my opinion better. Uh, yeah, I, I think you're right, Rob. I think it's like, it's probably giving you exactly what you think you're going to get, you know? Yeah, so, um, no surprises. But uh, like, I thought it was fine. I like, I didn't hate it, but I'm like, well, it's not the greatest movie ever either. It was yeah, just like, you, you can't, you you can't say laughs, it's false yeah. advertising or anything. <laughs> Lawrence, thank you for the 50 bits. Reagan Ridley and Brett Hand are my favorite uh, are my favorite two adult animation protagonists in a long time. And that speaks both to the quality of Inside Job and the sad state of adult animation scene the past couple of years. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of like, oh, you know what I did start watching? I'm only a few episodes in. Uh, and it's a little similar, even though it's a spinoff in our show. Uh, I just discovered Bird Girl, and that's pretty funny. Uh, it's a spinoff of uh, Harvey Birdman. Um, and uh, it, it's kind of a similar idea of like this woman that's like running this whole company and just a whole bunch of crazy people under her and trying to keep on top of it while having like this alter ego and everything. And like I say, it's a spinoff of Harvey Birdman. If you know that, it's very similar. And uh, yeah, and check that out. That's on HBO Max and you might like it. I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Will you review Problem Child 2, considering that you surprisingly loved the first one? Is that the one with the sister? Yeah, the, the little yeah. girl. Um, I've only seen that the one time it came out in theaters and we saw it. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I remember liking it as much as the first one. Uh, take that for what it's worth. Um, I don't know, maybe I should. If people did, like, it didn't do, like, gangbuster numbers, but, like, people really did like the review. They're like, oh, my God, I remember this. Do the sequel. So maybe I will. We'll see. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. Do you think Ewan McGregor would have been a good choice to play Carnage, or do you think Woody Harrelson was the best choice to play him? Oh, Harrelson was it. That's why I get even more angry at the movie. It's like, that, that was our maximum Carnage movie, and there was, like, so little Carnage. I'm just, ah! But, uh, no, I thought he was perfect casting, and uh, Harris as Shriek, uh, also wonderful. So, yeah. Uh, no, just... Kind of makes me more frustrated. <laughs> Kermit Wazowski, thank you for the 50 bits. They've been brought up here and there on stream, but what are some of your favorite Game Grumps moments? I've always liked them, but I've really been getting into them more recently. Oh, there's a few. That Nancy uh, Drew one that I missed. Yeah, uh, the I missed, and then the uh, Yoda jokes. The Yoda fine. jokes are really yeah. good. That was in Mario Maker. Um, I really... Oh... Uh, what was the other one? Uh, oh, Crazy Zelda. 
their take on Zelda is that she's just some nut job. So when you show up, it's like you just ran into some crazy person. It's like, you need to defeat the ultimate evil. It's like, it just kills me every time. And uh, of course, Timmy, the 18th century boy, who doesn't realize he's going to be murdered by his father. <laughs> Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. What's a fictional food in a movie or TV show that made you go, damn, I wish that was real? Anything in spirited uh, away. Is it bad if I say those poppers or whatever? That's what from, I said. Uh, <laughs> Somebody asked me last time, and that's what I said. Those poppers. I don't they care if like, they're alive. They look delicious. They look like the world's greatest fried shrimp. <laughs> yeah. Lorenz, thank you for the 50 bits. By the way, since Netflix greenlit 20 more episodes, we are guaranteed at least an additional 10 episodes of Inside Job. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. No, I, I thought I had a good cliffhanger i guess you can kind of call it uh at the end so yeah i'm looking forward to see what they do with that talking of carl thank you for the 50 bits this might be a hot take i don't care about squid game i don't care about watching it i think it's just a korean version of saw with extra steps besides just like tiger king which i never cared to watch either it will come and go people are odd when it comes to following what's trendy for the moment uh tiger king 2 is coming out thank you so much uh but even that, I'm curious to see how that does. I'm curious to see if that TK does well or if Judgment it, Day. like, bombs. Because, uh, yeah, I, I'm not that... I, I'm kind of with you. I think it might just come and go. Um, I'm just not I, I, interested I was, in seeing it. I, I, I'm a little curious from what everybody's been saying about it. Uh, but yeah, I just I don't feel know. like I've seen a bunch of anime do the same kind of concept. I'm just like... <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that concept's it's, been done, so I haven't been seeking it out. It's different enough that I'm liking it because I was like, oh, I mean, it sounds like something I'll like. I'm We're on, like, episode six of Squid Game. Um, I think it's just funny that so many people are like, well, I'm not going to watch it because it's just like this. But, like, it's different enough from Battle Royale. It's different enough from Hunger Games. Mm -hmm. um, it's I don't think it's too similar to Saw. I've never seen a Saw movie, but, like, it's... It's got some good character why are those, moments. Why are those the only two people go to? I'm like, there's a ton of anime and other things that have done something similar, but everybody's like, Battle Royale, Hunger Games. It's like, those are the only two things that if you put people in an area, it's like, yeah. well, it's instantly like that. Like, I don't know. We managed to pick up the pace a little bit. People are giving more gotcha. bits here. <laughs> okay. um, Anu, thank you for the 50 bits. Who would you say is the best villain of the classic Classic Masters of the Universe, Skeletor or Hordak? In my opinion, I love the design of Hordak. Oh, oh Skeletor. Skeletor. The answer's uh, always Skeletor. Yeah. Best villain, Skeletor. Hottest Even if he's not in Skeletor. Skeletor. It's Skeletor. It's always Skeletor. <laughs> Turtle Power, thank you for the 50 bits. Sorry about any repeated questions. I had to leave the chat early last time, so I didn't know if my questions went through. It's cool. Um, Big Jack Films, thank you for the 50 bits. Hey, guys, sorry I'm late. Got back from Fan Expo over the weekend. Finally got to show off my Captain Hook cosplay. Met up with Dante Bosco. He told me to say hi to you guys, by the way. Oh, nice. Oh, He's nice. so nice. Oh, Dante. <laughs> Godzilla fan, thank you for the 50 bits. Doug, you weren't here when I asked this, but who is more annoying, Rob Snyder or Polly Shore? Uh, oh, what, in movies? Uh, probably Polly Shore, yeah. <laughs> Rob Snyder at least will try, or Snyder will at least try to do characters. So. Yeah. Anu, thank you for the 50 bits with Rob's most famous garbage. Makes me think of the garbage day meme and an idea hit me. Why not do a top 11 movie scenes that have turned into memes? Uh, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. For the record, I, I stole that from Aaron Hansen because he always is garbage. So that's <laughs> not me. I just stole it from him. <laughs> Strider for life. Thank you for the 100 bits. So, Doug, have you seen the Lightyear trailer? And if so, what are your thoughts? Uh, yes, and eh, but that might mean it's good, because <laughs> the eh trailers usually lead to good Pixar movies. Le Pew, thank you for the 50 bits. Will you cover Nick at night? Also, sorry, Walkers, your chimp died. <laughs> That's from Lawnmower Man. Um, uh, there might be too much to cover. Yeah, I, I think there's a little too much to talk about with that, because it's still going, too. I know it, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Doug, do you think you'll make a movie script like Brad with Jesus Bro or his cinema snob movies? I'll have to see. I have one or two other side uh, things I'm trying out. And I did write a few scripts, but I have this bad habit of whenever I write something, it's made like a year later by somebody else. <laughs> so, um, yeah, well, we'll have to see where that goes. I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Doug, do you think Eddie Murphy or, eh, sorry, Eddie Murphy and Rick Moranis would make a great duo? Or Eddie Murphy and Bill Murray? Uh, Murphy and Murray, I'd be more interested to see. Yeah. That'd be an odd team up. 
Um, I don't know. Try it. <laughs> Sailor Aaron, thank you for the 50 bits. What is your favorite Studio Ghibli pairing slash couple? Mine are Kiki and Tombo, Chihiro and Haku, Shida and Pazu, Sophie and Howl, and Shizuku and Seiji, to name a few. Uh, I love I Sophie and Howl. <laughs> uh, I guess the kids in uh, um, Castle in the Sky. I thought they're pretty sweet together. Um, I like the the duo in uh, Whispers of the Heart. Mm. And there was another one called Memories of Yesterday, and it's a little more adult. But uh, those two, I thought, were just kind of fun together. But that's more like an adult story where it's about reminiscing. So. I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Do you think Ewan McGregor channeling his inner black mask would make a good Joker in the DC Universe if they decide to replace Jared Leto? Oh, yeah. God. That's all Anybody I was thinking would watching be better that. than Jared Leto. Yeah, but he would have been a this phenomenal Joker. This pumpkin mug would be better than Jared Leto. <laughs> Godzilla fan, thank you for the 50 bits. Thoughts on Galaxy Quest? Okay. I, I never got I... the huge love for it, but it's, it's all right. My only complaint about Galaxy Quest is originally, apparently, it was supposed to be R-rated. I want that movie. <laughs> I want that movie so bad because, like... The only thing I don't like about Galaxy Quest, it has no edge. It's it's kind of family friendly and ha ha tee hee, but I like I just it's begging for a little more edge to be a little more cynical, poke a little more fun at like Trekkies, and and I'm like I'm a huge Trek fan myself, so, but uh, yeah, I wanted that extra edge to it. Adam Grunther, thank you for the fifty bits. What's your favorite stand up joke by a comedian? For me, it's Gilbert Gottfried commenting that when he did Problem Child, the kid who played the main character wouldn't stop touching his dick off screen, but decided not to mention it because the kid got paid more than him. Maybe it's because how he said it, but I died of laughter when I heard it. Lewis Black had a good one that ends with if it weren't for my horse. And it's something I actually have said multiple times when like I feel like I'm gonna get an aneurysm from something that is so stupid that I over uh, I get, I mean, it's an old joke, but I think Ellen doing the procrastination thing, like literally it begins, the standup begins with her talking about, it, and then ends with her finishing up about it. <laughs> like she procrastinated the whole standup. I, I thought that was pretty funny. I oh, uh, the David Chappelle OJ jokes. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good set. I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. For me, I think I'm mad at it because I was overexposed to it. Like, I was overexposed to Elmo. Oh, what, Squid Game? Um, uh, perchance? I'm not sure yeah, it, what yeah, the it is. Um, I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Is it just me, or does Taskmaster's costume kind of remind me of Skeletor? Not the MCU costume, the comics costume. Um, oh. I mean, there is a skull on it sometimes, but... I don't know if that makes it like Skeletor just because it's a skull on a muscled body, but. Eh. But that's literally what he is. So I guess I could see that. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> a muscle body. Strider for life. Thank you for the 50 bits. Do you remember that one Arsenio Hall show with Jason Voorhees as a guest? Personally, I think he should have interviewed Freddy Krueger. <laughs> well, I don't know if I saw there. that one. I had seen a few episodes of Arsenio back in the day. Man, that takes I, me back. I loved Arsenio, man. Yeah, yeah he was awesome. Anu, thank you for the 50 bits. Since you're into Skeletor, did you know there's a comic where He-Man is the evil bad guy and Skeletor as a blue human as the good guy? Might be worth a look. Ooh, okay. Might check that out. I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Doug, I know you won't review Gooby, the film with Robbie Coltrane and Eugene Levy, but have you seen it? If not, it's free on YouTube. I still haven't, man. I'll try to, like I said, catching up with a lot of stuff to watch. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. Have you seen Peanut Butter Gamer's review of The Christmas Tree? And if so, thoughts? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I'll try to check it out. Mumrar, thank you for the 50 bits. What are your top three movie bullies? Mine are number three, Terry Silver from Karate Kid 3. Two, Biff Tannen from Back to the Future. One, Buddy Revel from 3 O'Clock High. That's pretty uh, good. Oh, uh, Scott, was it Far Farkas? Yeah, I was going to say Christmas From, Story. Uh, Christmas Story. He's really cry. <laughs> yeah, and then I'll say Terry Silver, and I guess I'll also say the head of Cobra Kai. Uh, I'm blanking out his name, but yeah, he's great. All Karate Kids characters. I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. What are your thoughts on the latest Dave Chappelle show, The Closer? No controversy here, please. <laughs> uh, I mean, I liked it. Uh, I definitely, but I'm not 
part of that community either. So it's hard for me to say like, oh, what? Uh, I'd like to see a conversation because that's what I got out of the closer. I got he wanted to have a conversation, opened up a conversation. So that's what I would like to see happen, uh, whether it does or whatever happens. I don't know. But but I, I would like to see that come about. There's a great line in Seinfeld where they asked him, it's like, and this offended you as a member of, you know, XYZ community and Seinfeld replies, no, it offended me as a comedian. Um, listen, you can offend me. I mean, that's stand up comedy. Like, I don't have to agree or whatever. I just didn't find it that funny. It's just, <laughs> it's just getting one note to me where I'm like, is this all this is going to be about now from now on, whenever Chappelle's on? Like, so I, I don't know. It didn't do that much for me. Um, that's where I stand. So. Anu, thank you for the 50 bits. Last bits for me. What are you guys going to drink tomorrow for your game stream? You know, I had, um, I, I got a couple of whiskeys I want to try. I do have like this IPA, uh, th this whiskey that was aged in IPA barrels. I'm really, really curious to try out. Uh, so I'll probably do that. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. Which Adam Sandler movie character is your favorite? For me, it's the sadistic nurse plays by, played by Ben Stiller and Happy Gilmore. Oh, like in an Adam Sandler movie. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, uh, the bully from Happy Gilmore. Uh, I really like. I, I uh, McDonald. I forget his name. Christopher oh, McDonald. I think. Uh, yeah. Oh god, that guy's. You eat pieces of shit for breakfast? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know what, guys. Thank you for the fifty bits, Rob. Considering that you look like Jason Alexander, what's your favorite performance of his? Oh, Jesus. Uh, I mean, I really love him in Seinfeld. Uh, I, I got to go Duckman, though. Mm. Uh, you know, this is what you get. Bland, flavorless mush. Demand, as somebody put it, yeah. Demand to be challenged, to be offended, to be treated like a thinking, reasoning adult. Yeah, like that. Duckman's my favorite. <laughs> All right, cool. And that's all the bits. So we've got a couple Ooh. of minutes to look at some of the highlighted message here, messages here. Um, J Star Otaku says, hey, guys, how's your day? I'm doing great. My sister had her baby today. I'm officially an aunt. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations. It's so fun being an aunt. Anyway, possible video game selection for you. The world ends with you or its sequel. It's also a Square Enix RPG, and it's a lot of fun to play. Keep it in mind. Oh, all right. Never heard of it. Uh, yeah, try to check it out. I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Fun fact, Christopher McDonald would, will be in the MCU with Secret Invasion. Mmm, I'm excited. <laughs> Bernsey, thank you for the 50 bits. Rob Foundation and the Sharp series with Sean Bean checked out either of them. Doug checked out Fido and the Cottage with Andy Serkis. I do want to oh, check oh, out okay. Foundation at some point. It's, it's great if you like big sci-fi right now between Dune and Foundation. So. I, I, I get, thank you for reminding me, though, because I did see pictures from that movie. I wanted to check it out, that cottage movie. <laughs> that looked very weird. Uh, Sailor Aaron says, stupid internet at my end. It's so slow. Going to have to call it a night. See you all tomorrow for Retro Disney Night. Bye. <laughs> bye, bye. Best of luck. <laughs> uh, Matt Gamer says, hi, Rob. Welcome to the land of the living. Thank you. CDI Charlie Brown, thank you for the 100 bits. Real quick, Lonesome Ghost for Dark Tunes in the future? Uh, not ringing a bell. Look it up, though. Is that the one? Didn't we do one with a Lonesome Ghost? Didn't we do a riff? Oh, no, no. This is the uh, Mickey Mouse one with the three ghosts. Uh, oh, gotcha. I'll look at it again. I don't remember being that dark, dark but, uh, but I do kind of like it. Fernsey, thank you for the 50 bits. I loved the poster of Dude with Dune marked up as the Big Lebowski. Well, that's awesome. I mean, dude, oh, I haven't seen that. That, that sounds hilarious. That. It's like two of my favorite things put together. <laughs> um, and this might be our last one here. Amadeus Zelda says Molly Ringwald, sorry, Molly Ringwald's Breakfast Club character received Saturday detention for leaving school early. I feel she should have received regular detention. Do you feel kids deserve Saturday detention for leaving school early without permission? I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense. If you're leaving early, you come on a day where you're not supposed to be there. <laughs> right. Um, also, like, not to complicate things with laws and whatever, um, leaving school early without permission is technically against the law as well because kids have compulsory education until you're 16. So I think there's, like, some kind oh, of sure. issues with, yeah, you compulsory education. You have to be in school until you're 16. Oh, fuck. I broke the um, law a lot. I missed, I missed the days <laughs> well, is that it, we you had, had officers, people with big hooks. Yeah. And just grab the kid. Like, if you have your parents' permission and stuff, you know, like, 
you're allowed to leave. But technically, if you don't have, if you are just, if you skip school early and a cop pulled you over, they would have the right to like physically bring you back to school. Okay. Well, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and being cops, me? I'm sure no. that they will physically do this in the most polite way possible. They're, <laughs> they're not going to arrest you. That actually, that burden falls on the parents. Um, That's to arrest you, not to arrest you, but like technically if a kid is truant too often, like the responsibility of truancy falls on the parents. I'm getting really into this when we don't need to be. <laughs> well, that is really interesting. <laughs> so like, Doug and I just want to know how much trouble we would have been in. <laughs> if anyone ever would get arrested, it would technically be the parents but i don't know if anyone would actually get arrested um i think cps might get involved before um arrests would be made child protective services might be involved before arrests got made interesting yeah it's fun facts (laughs) anyway (laughs) um thank you all so much for joining us here tonight um we appreciate you being here um we have content here six days a week so please come on back and hang out with us um tomorrow malcolm will not be streaming at one o'clock but doug will be please come back hang out for us (laughs) yeah not at one o'clock yes at six at six um but it is not a kingdom hearts stream but it is a disney stream so please come and hang out all right come on back love to see yeah yeah um well have a wonderful weekend yes awesome comics is supposed to be on saturday yep 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 um no doug is not streaming at one we said he's not going to be (laughs) six (laughs) o'clock six o'clock no misunderstandings doug's is regular usual time um anyway um have a wonderful evening we'll see you all later and uh thank you so much bye